steal the yellow jersey if he can do it again today. But Lance Armstrong has never lost the final time trial at the Tour, and he doesn't plan on losing today. So who will it be, Ulrich or Armstrong? You make your pick, and we'll make ours on the Tour Free Race Show next. here in Nantes. Everything looks calm right now, but by day's end, the 2003 Tour de France will be all but decided after today's individual time trial. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the pre-race show as OLN's 2003 tour coverage continues. I'm Kirsten Gum, joined as always by Bob Roll. I don't know about you, I am ready for today's time trial, last two stages of, of the tour, but what about this weather? I don't know if the rain's supposed to continue all day or not. Well, even the weather is cooperating with Lance Armstrong's plans to win his fifth Tour de France. The sky is crying and the Texas floodwaters are rising. Jan Ulrich looking like the new Poseidon in Atlantis. Well, before we get to today's time trial, let's go ahead and talk about stage 18 yesterday and Pablo Lastras's big win yesterday. Big win for the Benesto rider. Young man on the youngest team in the Tour. Nice sunny skies at the start of yesterday's race. That's Virenk in the polka dot jersey and Lance Armstrong, of course, in the yellow jersey. One jersey that might be changing hands at the start of yesterday's stage was the green jersey. Now there was a small breakaway at the start of the stage and then it was caught just before the first intermediate sprint. Jan Ulrich took that chance to attack for some time. Robbie McEwen astutely saw his chance. He got maximum points but it was Ulrich who stole two seconds from Lance Armstrong. He was very surprised however to see Lance Armstrong right on his wheel. Maybe more worrying for Ulrich was that Lance was just behind him on that sprint. Lance obviously not known as a sprinter but able to get up there for a time bonus of itself. Then it was a big breakaway after things got reorganized. 16 guys, they got a huge lead over 20 minutes. And this is Thomas Volkler, the young rider from Brioche Boulanger, who's having such a very good season, taking the first chance to attack. We knew that it would start disintegrating before the finish, that big breakaway, just too big to manage all the way to the end. Then the attacks were fast and furious on the run into the finishing town. And it was this rider right up the road there from Alessio getting a little bit of an advantage, but everyone attacking each other, trying to close the gap down to these six guys that were in the front. Nardello was in that group. Lostros was in that group. Volkler made it into that group. And they would start to attack each other as well. De Cruz there asking Nardello to come through. Nardello pretty strong in the break, but it was not quite strong enough. Daniele Nardello has won tour stages just like this in the past, but couldn't quite do it. The quick step rider, here he is, David Plaza, taking a long flyer, trying to steal the stage away. He had the best chance to do it. You can see it's so tenuous right now his little bit of a lead and these three riders were chasing him all the way to the line and that was David Kenyatta there in the front trying to win the stage you can see him along the fence there on the left hand side of your screen but look at the three chasers led by De Cruz of the Francais de Joux team he's a very fast sprinter and he was obliged to lead it out chasing the wheel of Kenyatta all the way to the line look at Lostros tucked in there just behind Nardello hoping Nardello will close the gap to De Cruz if Nardello is going to close the gap to De Cruz, it better happen soon for Lostros, who's fourth in line right now. They come around Kenyatta, which is 200 meters to go. It looked like De Cruz had the win right there, but look at Lostros' final kick to the line. He passed him with literally 20 meters to go, just barely winning the stage. Nardello taking a bit of a bad line there, and Pablo Lostros getting the win there honoring the, the memory of his mom. Here's a sprint for the green jersey. Baden Cook knows he has to beat Rob, Bob, Robbie McEwen. McEwen getting it on the line there. And with the six points he got early in the day and the one point there he got over Baden Cook, he took over the green jersey. Great win by the Benesto Rider. They're second in the tour for the young Pablo Lastras. Lance Armstrong keeping the yellow jersey That's again. Right. All right, let's look at stage results. It was Pablo Lastras on top. He's followed by De Cruz, Nordello, Cañada, and Lely running out the top five. Let's go ahead and go and look at the overall now. Lance Armstrong still in yellow, still on top. He's followed by his main rival, Jan Ulrich, only a minute five seconds behind now. Alexander Vinokurov in third. Imar Zubeldia behind him. Ivan Mayo in fifth. American Tyler Hamilton still in sixth. He's going to try to make up a lot of time today during the time trial. Ivan Basso, Christoph Moro, Francisco Mancebo, and Carlos Sastra. Well, it was Pablo Lastras who got the win yesterday, but Frankie caught up with Lance to talk about the time trial today. Frankie? Lance, 
Looking looking ahead towards tomorrow, how are you feeling? And did you have a chance to compare Jan Ulrich's time trial to some of the time trials that you did in the years before in the tour? No, I mean, tomorrow I feel I feel uh, ready to go. And, uh, you know, if you compare the, 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 you know, in the tour, it seems like there's always big difference between, between the first time trial and the last time trial. And uh, if you compare uh, years past, uh, you know, he's, he's not been as strong in the, in the final time trials now. That's not to say he won't be tomorrow, but uh, I'm confident and uh, at the end of the day, I don't want to go home and, and look my teammates in the eyes and have having lost uh, the Tour de France in that time trial, so I'm going to go fast. Have you already pre-written the course and seen it already? Uh, we were there in um, April, and then I'll go again tomorrow morning. What do you predict to be a winning time? A fast one. Yeah. <laughs> How fast? Uh, probably a record. Probably to a record. All right. C good luck. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thanks, Lance. Bob, a very bold prediction by Lance Armstrong there, of course, talking about Greg LeMond's 1989 time trial record. Well, at the start of the day, there was a big wind blowing from the coast. And when he when he made the prediction after yesterday's stage, there was a strong wind blowing off of the ocean towards the finishing town. However, the rains have come in, the wind has died down, so we might not see a record pace, but we will see a huge battle between Lance and Jan Ulrich, and Lance seems to be very ready for that. When he goes out today, this morning, and uh, and goes around the course and stuff, what does he map out when it comes to a, a rainy day like this, or is there any difference? Well, absolutely. Any dangerous corners he'll take a look at, and he'll have to adjust his speed based on the wet water conditions. If there's any manhole covers or paint in the road in any of those corners. He'll take a look at those, make a special note of those. Also, Johan Bruniel will be doing it with him, so he can also remind Lance as they go along, remember that manhole cover in this corner right here. Also, his teammates will have given him reports throughout the day about what to look for, so he'll be very, very ready. He also took a look at the course last night after yesterday's stage, so he's got plenty of time to take all kinds of of uh, reconnaissance of the course and that's a huge advantage you know what to expect especially when the conditions have turned so adverse like they are today what does what do these conditions mean for Ulrich who really has to be taking more risks today to try to make up time on Armstrong yes absolutely it's, it uh, reduces the amount of time that he is actually capable of getting he does have to slow it down a little bit the average speed will come down a bit so I think that the advantage because of the weather swings back to Lance a little bit and uh, when the weather is cooperating with you it's very difficult <laughs> <laughs> for your rivals. Yes, it is. Also, Jan doesn't really like to race in the rain that much. Uh, in the Tour, historically, Jan Ulrich has always struggled on the very rainy days in the Tour. That might abate a little bit. It might not be quite as wet towards the afternoon when these riders go, but it is going to be another epic day on the Tour. I am glad that Lance Armstrong likes the rain, that's for sure. Well, don't go away, because coming up, we're going to talk to Phil Liggett and Paul Sherwin about today's time trial, and they're going to break it down for us. Stay with us. You're watching the Tour on OLN. A soggy day here in Nantes, the city of 250,000, but today it will be very crowded as everyone awaits for the time trial to begin. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the pre-race show here on OLN. Well, just a little over 200 kilometers left until the race ends in Paris. Right now, we take a look back as Sam Posey continues his look at the U.S. legacy at the Tour. Greg LeMond's three wins and Lance Armstrong's four have come in the last 17 years of the tour, which makes America seven for 17. Not bad for a country that went winless until 1986. Other riders were making American presence felt in the tour, and like LeMond, some were riding for European teams. In 1997, Bobby Julek and Kevin Livingston were signed by the French Cofidis team, and Chris Horner was riding for Francais de Jeux. While Lance Armstrong was recovering from cancer in 1998, Bobby Julek's surprising third place overall gave American fans something to cheer about. The following year, Armstrong was back and riding to the first of the four tours he has won to date. Armstrong's team, U.S. Postal, was the only one to show interest in him after his injury. The team's backer, Tom Wiesel, had first hired Armstrong seven years before to race in the U.S. for his Subaru Montgomery team. In 2002, as Lance recorded his fourth consecutive tour victory, joining the ranks of the sport's greatest riders. American cycling fulfilled the promise shown 
when Greg LeMond reached the podium back in 1984 and set the stage for future success. Only four riders have won the Tour five times. Jacques Anquetil, Eddie Merckx, Bernard Hinault, and Miguel Indurain. Two Frenchmen, a Belgian, and a Spaniard. Now an American, Lance Armstrong, is poised to join that elite group. And joining us once again are Phil Liggett and Paul Sherwin. What do you think, guys? Well, I think that it's going to be Lance's toughest tour to try and win now because he's going for the fifth, as Sam Posey has told us, but he is going in with the narrowest margin he's had over the men he's beaten in the previous four tours. I think we can have a look at that. Just take a look at this. Uh, 6 minutes 15 when he beat Fernando Escartin. 5.37 ahead of Ulrich. 5.05 of Ulrich in 2001. But lucky last year. But look at that. Just a minute and five seconds now ahead of Jan Ulrich. And I think Jan Ulrich now is going to see that as his best chance to win a Tour de France and beat Lance Armstrong. It's amazing that uh, after all the racing we've done so far, it is so close. It can go either way. I remember back in 1989, you and I did a stand-up on the uh, start near Versailles. Mm. And I said it's impossible for Greg LeMond to win this is too far behind at 50 seconds well he actually beat Laurent Fignon by 58 seconds in that individual time trial this could go down to that as well and the weather conditions certainly make it a little bit more confusing as well to, to come up with a prediction of any sort yeah what about the weather I mean how, how are, are the riders going to react to this M many riders love racing in the rain you said you like yeah I used to like racing in the rain it was not too heavy and not too cold but on the other hand you know there's so much can happen in a time trial. This really is the race of truth. The mechanics this morning are going to be shaking because so many things can go wrong with the machinery when it rains. They're not allowed to go near the rides. They can't touch them. If they have a flat tire, pull them and change a bike, aren't they? They're not going to mess about waiting to change a wheel. They don't, they, don't, they don't take the risk at all of trying to change a wheel out on the course. They've got to be there. The, the mechanic is going to be on edge for 49 kilometers. At kilometers. He'll be sitting at the edge of the car waiting to leap out, take the spare bike as quickly as possible. It's going to be a tense moment for everybody, but it's not just tense for the 49 kilometers. It's tense from the moment they wake up this morning because they're looking at the weather, they're looking at the wind. What, what, what tires am I going to use? What pressure am I going to put in the tires? It's a huge, important decision to make. And many times the guys might not make it until 15 minutes before they start. Who do you think has Sorry. the advantage? today, Lance Armstrong or Jan Ulrich? We can't, we can't say. It's we, impossible. We refuse to predict. <laughs> we, <laughs> the the difficult thing is, I spoke to Chris Carmichael just a little bit earlier on and I said, come on Chris, what's it going to be like? Chris, although he has the inside information on Lance Armstrong, he doesn't have any information on Jan Ulrich. None of us do. We can't get that close to the athletes. There's only two men know. Armstrong knows what he can do today and Ulrich knows what he can do and they're not telling us anything and we're gonna try to get some out of Chris Carmichael a little bit later in the show let's talk about some other people I mean obviously all eyes are going to be on Ulrich and Armstrong but there's other guys trying to make up some time especially American Tyler Hamilton who wants a podium spot in Paris Tyler's had a, a brilliant tour how on earth he's done it we'll never know will we Paul but he's done brilliant. it and he's over the three weeks his fractured collarbone has got better and better he's coming stronger and stronger he was always the lead out man in a time trial for Lance Armstrong because he was always behind him in the overall classification when they were on the same team together. Tyler Hamilton would go out, come back and tell Lance exactly where the wind was, how it was going, and he'd set a very good marker. He often was the leader when he came home with the best time. And now he's riding in his own right. I think he's inspired enough. I can't see him catching Vinokur off. He's too far away, but I think he'll get over Mayo and Zabelia. It's very difficult, but don't discount Zubelda because I have a funny feeling no, that right. uh, Heimar right. Zubelda mm -hmm. may well be the man to cause the big surprise. He's not far off a podium position either, and he no. surprises on two occasions yeah, with his yeah, time trialing no. ability in this race. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't discount him taking third place. How much time can he make up? Two it and a half, He can make a couple of on minutes. On those riders, but not on the Kudov. I think... I think uh, Tyler Hamilton can beat Alexander Vinokurov by a couple of minutes, but not by 350. Boy, it is going yeah. to be a this great is, this stage. Is the time this is trial it, of right? The century. And it should be in the centennial tour. This is the best time trial since Greg LeMond took on Laurent Fignon in 1989. All right, well, thank you guys both. Don't forget our exclusive coverage of Stage 19 is coming up right after the pre race show. Up next, we talk to Lance Armstrong's personal coach, Chris Carmichael. Do the boss. And welcome back to our pre-race show as the rain continues to come down here in Nantes. Today's finish line for Stage 19. Little programming note for you. If the tour has you all geared up, well, don't forget the third grand tour of this year, the Vuelta a España, or the Tour of Spain. We'll have live daily coverage in September right here on OLN.
And hi, everybody. I'm Kirsten Gum with Bob Roll, and we're joined once again by Lance's personal coach, Chris Carmichael. Chris, a huge day for Lance today. Well, it, it is. We know uh, today is basically the day that he needs to seal up the Tour de France. When I talked to him last night, Lance said he felt great. Um, he actually said he really hopes that the, it starts to rain. Uh, he's got his wish. Whether it continues all day, we'll see. But it, he was hoping for it. And he said he was expected to, uh, he was going to stay on that narrow front tire, even if it was raining. I don't know if he's changed his mind. Uh, this morning, he went out and rode the course this morning in the team car with Johan. Um, so we'll see. Now, Chris, the first time trial in this tour, Lance lost quite a bit of time to Jan Ulrich. What's the difference here that we've gone through all the mountains now? We arrived just one day before the end, second to last day of the race. What changes or what differences will we see in between the first time trial and this one that we have today? Well, I think what you're going to see today is um, Lance is going to uh, really focus on keeping his hand position correct. Uh, during the last time trial, one of the things we've looked at is that he pulled his hands in a lot on the arrow bars. That brought him up a little bit more, uh, brought his head up. Uh, so he's catching more wind, not as aerodynamic. Uh, so he wants to keep his hands at the end of the bars. That'll keep his head down. He'll slide through the wind a little quicker. Uh, other thing is to keep his, uh, uh, his pedal cadence high. He's normally about 100 to 110 RPMs during, uh, during the time trial. And he's still considering riding that narrow front tire up front, that 19 millimeter front tire. Um, and I think given these conditions, and what he told me about being excited by the rain, he only he actually said he only hoped it was uh, colder. He wanted it down in uh, <laughs> down in um, like the 40s on the day of Hotacom in 2000. But it looks like it's not like that unless a cold front comes through real quick. Probably won't be any trouble overheating or being no. dehydrated today. <laughs> no, no, no trouble with that That's at gross. all. No trouble. All right. Are you nervous at all, Chris? No. You're not no. nervous. If you're not going to be nervous, that I'm not nervous. He's going to do it. You know, I mean, it's, uh, there's no way he's going to lose the Tour de France today. It's not going to happen. Uh, I'm very confident of that. I'm confident, too. Bob, you're always confident, I'm right? I'm always confident. I'm always going. All right, Chris Carmichael, thank you so much. Well, right now it's time to go ahead and check in with our travel reporter, Pam Fletcher. The Chateau de Breze in the Loire Valley just 80 miles east of the city of Nantes, has remained in the same two grand families for the last 800 years. The castle itself dates back to the 16th century and maintains a tasteful mix of both Renaissance and Gothic-style architecture. Two defenses of this castle were a narrow drawbridge and a 64-foot dry moat, the deepest of its kind in Europe. The extensive network of underground defensive galleries encompassing over one and a half miles allowed the defenders to use a crossfire system within the walls of the moat, leaving no escape for any intruders. 27 feet beneath the courtyard of the castle is the Rocher de Brezé, a hand-burrowed, fortified cave dwelling called a troglodyte, and it is one of 300 defensive underground castles in this region. People actually lived in here. What were they thinking? This was the first dwelling of the Lords of Brezé during the 9th and 10th centuries. It was built in defense of the Viking invasions from the Loire, and the troglodyte could be completely sealed off from intruders with enough food and water to sustain life for weeks. Strategically, just over six miles from the river, it was never found, and the actual chambers, grain bins, and animal pens with feeding troughs are still intact. All right, thank you, Pam. Well, stage 19 is just a few minutes away. The final individual time trial. We'll preview the course when we come back. You can feel the anticipation building here in Nantes. Riders are now on the course. You see everyone is waiting for this man, Lance Armstrong, to find out what he can do today during the time trial and how much time he can put on his main rival. There he is, Jan Ulrich, also getting ready to ride through 49 kilometers of very rainy, rainy weather. And welcome back to OLN's Tour Pre-Race Show here. Bob, take us through the route for today. A flat stage due east from the coast into Nantes from Pornic, 49 kilometers, 32 miles between Lance Armstrong, Jan Ulrich, and Destiny for the Tour de France. 
The winds of yesterday coming off of the ocean would have provided us with a very, very fast time trial. The clouds have rolled in and the rain is coming down hard, so the wind won't be nearly as much of a factor as it would have been if this stage was yesterday. Things can change quickly in the weather here, right by the coast, by the Atlantic. So perhaps by the time the riders start, Ulrich and Armstrong, it will have changed back again to something a little bit different. But I don't think we'll see the big winds that we would have seen yesterday. Well, we have heard the rain and we have felt the rain all day long. I think you can probably hear it uh, right now. It is coming down. It is pouring. I mean, it's raining cats and dogs here. Uh, just a disappointment. I don't like it. This weather. Also, right now, early reports are on the course. A couple riders have already gone down. Heschel is one of them, but despite going down, he is still the lead on the two time checks. Uwe Peschel is a great time trialist. He crashed twice out on the course. He had the fastest time in the first time trial for almost the whole race until Imar Zubeldia overcame his very quick time. Ove Peschel taking a lot of chances has crashed twice out on the course. So a very dangerous day. If you're going to take risks today, you're going to fall down. So we'll see. It's going to be an incredibly exciting race. A lot of riders will be taking risks today, not just Lance Armstrong and uh, Ulrich, but also some others. What about Vino Kurov and Zubeldia? Well, Vino Kurov needs to defend his third position on GC to get on the podium in Paris. Tyler Hamilton threatening three riders just in front of him, Zubeldia, Mayo, and Vino Kurov. Watch for Zubeldia perhaps to pull off the biggest surprise of the day by getting himself onto the podium. Well, it all is going to come down today. Will Lance Armstrong take time, make some time on Ulrich, and could he win his fifth consecutive tour? It's all going to happen today. We are as anxious as you to get to the action, so we're going to say so long for today, but don't forget, Stage 19 is coming up right afterwards. The most crucial 49 kilometers of the 2003 tour. Do not go away. You will not want to miss this. Stay with OLN. All the action is right here. You're watching a special presentation of the Outdoor Life Network. The highly anticipated face-off between two champion bike riders will unfold today when they ride for the Tour title in the individual time trial. Four-time Tour de France winner Lance Armstrong has gone head-to-head -head for three weeks with a rejuvenated Jan Ulrich. Now only 65 seconds separate the two as the race against time will decide the final outcome of this year's Centennial Tour. In the past, Lance Armstrong has dominated the final time trial, but the German looks now to spoil the American's perfect record. The showdown against the clock is next on OLN. taken three weeks to find the rain, but they found it on the one day they didn't want it. It's the time trial in the Tour de France. It couldn't be more finely balanced. By the end of this day, I think we'll know which one is going to win the Tour de France. Will it be Jan Ulrich or will it be Lance Armstrong for a fifth year in succession? Welcome back, everybody, as we continue our live coverage of the Tour de France here on OLN. I'm Phil Liggett, joined by Paul Schoen. Paul, I think we're as nervous as the riders today. A very nervous day here at the Tour de France. You know, for two men, it's a lot more nervous than anybody else here because Jan Ulrich and Lance Armstrong, they really do have to do something special. All right, well, let's just quickly go to the finishing line because this is the arrival here of Georgie Hincapie and putting in an extraordinarily good performance. David Miller setting the best time about 20 minutes ago, but Hincapie doing a great ride there. 55.13 and an average speed of 53.24. We are running very close, by the way, with Miller's time there towards the fastest time trial ever seen in a Tour de France. And uh, the other boys are still to start, of course. Well, you can see the conditions out on the course. We'll have a look at the map and uh, show you exactly where we are. We're right up now in the northwestern corner uh, here in the Vendée on the borders of Brittany. We're racing in from Pornic out on the coast, little fishing port there, as they're staying in the rain all day to finish in Nantes. 
49 kilometers, the first ever time trial in the Tour de France back in 1933. Also finished here, by the way, in Nantes. 201 kilometers remaining, but the most important of them are the 50 uh, today, or well, 49 to be absolutely precise. The sprints competition, that will resume tomorrow on the Champs-Élysées. Veronque has won the King of the Mountains competition. Now, today we have seen riders record best times at the checks and then promptly fall off. Here's another rider going down as we speak. And in fact, Ulla Peschel uh, crashed and has broken a rib and he's fallen off twice and he was about to arrive at the best time thus far. Uh, Bruce Tejin has also crashed and he finished covered in blood, but David Miller survived as he came through the rain here. Best time at the second and the third check. He was only second best time behind Peschel who crashed at the first and he is so far leading the day. Here's the overall situation, crucial as it most certainly is, almost 80 hours of cycling beneath the wheels, 65 seconds separate Ulrich and Lance Armstrong. Vinokurov, Zabeldi and Mayo will all be looking over their shoulders for a spectacular ride from Tyler Hamilton. At best, he'll get one of them, I think, and if he has a really great ride, he might snick two places in the overall. Morrow, best Frenchman. Now, let's have a look at the top time trials. Here they are. Miller, we've seen, is in with the best time. Sharo, Bladza. Bodrogi did have a, a best time. He slipped down a little bit now. Peschel, we know, crashed and reportedly has broken a rib. And I hope if they strap it, he can get to the finish in Paris tomorrow. It's his first Tour de France. Out onto the highways now, Paul. No signs of the rain easing. It is very heavy. It's very heavy. It's very difficult for the riders to actually make a tactical decision on just exactly what sort of equipment they will use this afternoon. The man in the starting gate right now, Chechu Rubiera, very relaxed. He's not one of the great time trialists, but he has been a very good lieutenant for Lance Armstrong in the big mountains. It's still very blustery out there and a lot of water on the course, so uh, the choice of tyres and tyre pressure is going to be very important this afternoon. Oh, life in the start house here. It's the driest place in the show as Chechu is off and running. Of course, Lance Armstrong and Jan Ulrich are still to go. 148 riders survive the Tour de France. This is a Paolo Bettini stamping his authority as he reaches. Comes in now, sprinting hard. About the 12th place at the moment. You can see his time coming up, 56.23. A couple of minutes down the mound. Very dangerous, Ben, that. So this is a good ride by Bettini Paul, but a little bit off the leaderboard, but I don't blame him for not taking too many chances. Well, he doesn't need to take too many chances. This man is ranked world number one. And uh, his team, uh, several of his team have actually put in pretty fine times. In fact, Laszlo Bodrogi, his teammate, the Italian, the Hungarian national champion at the time trial, had set the fastest time. 56.48 then for Paolo Bettini. Nobody at the checks approaching David Miller's checkpoint times yet. Miller in with the best time. Armstrong, Ulrich, Hamilton and the rest, of course, are still to start. The time trial is underway. We'll be back on OLN. And welcome back the wet cobble streets of the city of Nantes, one of the cities that hosted the very first Tour de France back in 1903. But uh, it's sad for the organization here in the city because the rain is teeming down. Michael Blaudsen coming in, ninth place for him, 56 01. David Miller of Britain is still the man on top of the leaderboard, 54 05. Okay, well, the Tour de France will, of course, end tomorrow, but you can still enjoy all of the excitement of this year's race, and Lance Armstrong himself, in his own words, will be defining this great tour. So, the defining moment of one of the closest races in history that will come to your screens here on OLN July the 31st at 8 p.m. Eastern time. That one should not be missed. This has been an extraordinary tour. Hey, we're looking at uh, Juan Miguel Mercado, who is riding for the Ibanesto.com. Had a great moment for the team yesterday with Lastras, Pablo Lastras, getting that stage win. Incidentally, little aside to that, when Lastras won yesterday, uh, a very sad fact indeed, it was four months, uh, it was his mother's birthday yesterday, four months since she passed away, and that was why he pointed at the sky as he crossed the line. But he took his win very, very well, snatching it literally on the line. So. 
He's going home now as a winner of the stage of the Tour de France, and he's got one in the Tour of Italy and two in the Tour of Spain. That's a nice total, isn't it? He's won in all the big bike races around the world, and he's still got the chance of improving. He's a rider who's always been dogged by injury throughout his career, and I think he's broken almost every bone in his body in crashes and managed to get himself back up to the top level of the sport. This man is a very good climber. He's a fair way down in the overall classification. But for him, uh, it's just a question of pride right now to put in a fine time trial performance. A lot of the riders who went off in the early part of the day, in fact, just making sure that they weren't eliminated because we are seeing some very fast times here on the individual time trial because of these prevailing tailwinds. Back to the start house. Three minutes has gone by since Didier Roos departed. You can see the rain for yourselves. And this is Jörg Jats. Now, right out at the beginning, he produced a very good prologue time trial. He was going to stay a top ten contender, I think, until he had the unluck there to have to stop for his fallen teammate Bolocki on the way into gap. He lost four and a half minutes there and he slipped away from the leaderboard, but he still had a very consistent tour. Now, the fastest time trial we've ever had over distance came from Greg Lamont, by the way, when he reversed the race to take an eight-second victory in 1989, 54.545. David Miller's time at the moment is 54.358. It's reasonable to assume that Armstrong and Ulrich might go in to records we've never seen in the Tour before very dramatic tour this has been right up until the last moment and even this morning you know, there is still so much debate on who is going to be the best man in the individual time trial because at the end of the day Phil I have to admit there are only two men who know how they can perform out on the course and they will know after the first kilometer of their ride today whether or not they've got the legs to take them to victory well, Santiago Botero, the world time trial champion, he rides for this telecom team and he too has now slipped away from the leaderboard and out of the Tour de France. As we just look here at uh, one of the riders, I can't see which one it is at the moment, but it looks to me as though it might be Giuseppe Guarini who's out on the road. It is Guarini, yeah, those long thin legs. Guarini was the man who was knocked off his bike by Eric the photographer at the top of Alpe d'Huez a couple of years ago when he was about to win the stage. He remounted, won the stage. Eric actually sought him later to apologise, and uh, Guarini said, oh, well, it didn't matter because I won anyway. I bet he wouldn't have done that if he had lost, though. He wouldn't have been too happy if he had lost, but uh, this team, Team Telecom, have uh, been pretty remarkable throughout the Tour de France. They have been there, present when needed to be. Unfortunately, I don't think they were built around Eric Zabel. They did not uh, present themselves on any of the flat stages to lead Eric Zabel out in the sprint. They thought this year they had a great chance of unthroning Lance Armstrong. But for them, it was rather sad because before the Tour de France, they lost a lot of their top men, Paolo Salvadelli, and of course, Cadell Evans, the Australian, who last year led the Tour of Italy. Here's Nicky Sorensen here. He's the, the brother of Rolf Sorensen, who retired this year. We actually had lunch with him, to tell you the truth. And Rolf was saying he was glad he wasn't in the tour now um, because it's so hard. But Nicky's the champion of Denmark and he's coming in with a very respectable time here. But he's not going to rival David Miller. There's the concentration of Nicky. Nice round of applause from the crowd who braved the weather as well to stand here and watch the finish in Nantes. As the race will continue, we are running now to the start of Roberto Leseca. He'll be next to go. Armstrong and Ulrich, of course, still ahead. There's Leseca. We'll take a break on OLM. Well, this is the arrival of Michael Rogers of Canberra as we continue our coverage now of the time trial here. 49 kilometres from Pornic to Nantes in the pouring rain. Good ride by Rogers in his first Tour de France, 23 and a half years of age, and he's sitting there in eighth position at the moment. And you can see the rain absolutely lashing down here. It has its moments, but basically it's staying heavy. As we look out on the course now, this is uh, Roberto Heras, again, the right-hand man of Lance Armstrong in the mountains. He's, he's tumbled a couple of times, Heras, but three weeks on, all the bandages seem to be off now, Paul. Well, they're probably hid underneath his skin suit for the moment because uh, he has been down on the ground a couple of times. He's a great bike rider. We've seen him win the Tour of Spain in the past. And I wonder if he'll have the form to go and try and win the Tour of Spain later on in this season. But he has been put under pressure as well because uh, look at the way he's going around these corners. This is a very tricky course out here. It is so important for these riders to make sure they have the tyre pressures so sorted out to complete and utter correction. Because normally in a time trial like this, the riders would have their tyre pressures at uh, around about 115 psi. In fact, today, I would think the majority of them would opt for about seven and a half to eight and a half. 
and uh, if you do have your tyres a little bit too hard, they do become very slippy in the corners. Well, Paul, uh, just a little note here which has been passed to me from David Mill, the British rider who has got the best tyre. Now, listen to this. He crashed in the last 15 kilometres. He says the course should be neutralised in those last 15 kilometres as it is not fair to expect Ulrich and Armstrong to race in these conditions over that part of the course. He says it's like an ice rink in those last 15 kilometres. It is incredibly dangerous and is not safe. And he crashed himself when his back wheel slipped away and he's cut his leg apparently, but he's come in with the best time. Now that's incredible. Well, I tell you what, it's a remarkable thing about David Miller. He does not mince his words, so he obviously realises that that was a very difficult uh, race route. And uh, I don't think there's any way at all the organisation will try and neutralise that last 15 kilometres. But I just hope that both Armstrong and Ulrich can stay upright, because what a way that would be for either of them to lose their position in the overall classification. So the start of Richard Barong at 15, 20 hours here. We're getting closer to the big start of the top men. He's 15th in the Tour de France. He's riding to Paris tomorrow. Six times the winner of the King of the Mountains. Equals the record there of Federico Bahamontes, who was the Eagle of Toledo, and uh, Lucien Van Inn. Still carrying the scars there of a crash in his first week of the Tour de France. Healing nicely. Now we're going to turn rusty, I think, because of the rain that's coming down here today. But this man will be cheered all the way from Pornic to Nantes, and his time, well, he's not going to worry too much as long as he stays safe. That's the most important thing to him. That's the countdown. He's off. So he's away, and he's in the polka dot jersey as he shoots off. We we'll go back to the finishing line here now, and this is Gutierrez, Jose Enrique. 26th place for him as he hits the line, 57, 16, 27th as he comes through. Pretty routine, but not a bad time for the Spanish rider. He doesn't look as... Oh, he's fallen as well, look. He's covered in scars. Another man has gone down. Now, at the finish, 54.05 for Miller. Miller is saying the last 15 kilometres are far, far too dangerous. Right, well, as we're talking of David Miller, let's have a look at our infinity rider of the day accelerating the future and we're looking at young and up-and-coming riders we've chosen David Miller today we didn't know at the time he was going to come in with the best time thus far uh, but he has so far he came in at the 2000 Tour de France when he had a surprise prologue win which caused Lance Armstrong to say who's the British guy well they know now because David Miller is a good time trial rider He's held the yellow jersey in the tour for three days. He has indeed uh, won at two stages of the race. He comes from, well, he was born in Malta. We're never quite sure where he actually comes from. His mother is Scottish. His father lives in Hong Kong. But Miller lives himself in France. He's 26 years of age, and he's had some good results in 2003 in the Dauphiné and the Classique des Alpes. Still out on the course here as we continue to watch Roberto Heras. Just uh, not rock any boats, uh, that's the wrong phrase to use on these conditions today, I think. David Miller is the best time, 54.05, but Drogi is second, Ekimov still sits in third place. We'll take a break. And welcome back as we watch the Frenchman, uh, Sylvain Chavanel, one of the stars, the French hope of the future of cycling in this country, and he's putting in a very good time trial. They really know the quality this man possesses. This is the man that Armstrong uh, tapped on the back when he was forced to catch him and beat him to the top of Luz Ardiden. And at that time, this ride had been the lead for nearly 200 kilometres. It was a great day out. Apart from the win, he'd won every crossing of every mountain that day. Well, he's come around safely around that bend, but the rain is causing chaos out on the course, and we hope it does not affect Lance Armstrong and Jan Uri. I can tell you, by the way, once those two start, we have dedicated cameras on them, so we're not going to miss a pedal rev. Sixth place for Sylvain, and that's a great ride. Well, as we're watching now, uh, slow motion here, of Sylvain Chavanel coming in. The French are right to think he's a star of the future, Paul. Well, I think he will be a star of the future. He's, uh, it's rather interesting to hear Cyril Guimard because Guimard reckons that none of the French were any good at all in the Tour de France. He said they were just racing to get themselves onto the TV screens and not thinking about actually winning the stages. Oh He's a very hard man, our, our uh, Cyril Guimard. Yeah, well, and he was when he was a rider, wasn't he? He was. And he was a man who uh, took on Eddie Merckx on many occasions. And he claims to have won more Tour de France than Merckx, Hino and the rest because he won seven. But that was as a team manager. Right, yeah, that's absolutely right. And, of course, he was behind Greg LeMond at one stage and Bernardino, all of them. 
Peter Lutenberger, he's also completing yet another great Tour de France. 13th overall at the moment. Rides on Tyler Hamilton, Danish CSC team, and has been good support. But even at 13th overall, he's only number three on the overall classification. Carlos Shastra is yet to go. He won the stage in the Alps, of course. And Tyler Hamilton, who got his stage win further around the country, uh, they still to start. Very important ride for Tyler later on as he chases Iban Mayo and Heymar Zubeldi in particular. I don't think he'll catch Alexander Vinicur. Now, that's a nice picture. You can see the sort of road that they're racing on. It's not flat, is it? And despite the rain here, the crowd is turning out. Well, it's a good course out away from Nantes, but once the riders get into Nantes and the finish around the city here, it does then become exceptionally dangerous. There's no danger out on the open road. It's nice and straight. There's not too much traffic furniture either for the riders to have to negotiate, but coming into town, these white bands, Phil, they are almost like an ice rink, and it's very difficult, even for the most experienced bike riders, to keep the bike upright on occasions. As in you go, Shero, he's a pretty good time trial rider, this man. We can expect some good times out of him. We're not getting any splits on him, though, at the moment. Still, uh, Uwe Peschel has set the best time at 15 kilometers, but he crashed twice after that. And uh, Miller has got the best time at every other check and the finish. So we're looking now at the Rabobank rider, and by the way, I can tell you that uh, George Hincapie is going to pass back information to Lance Armstrong. This is the message I'm getting from George. He's telling him it's super dangerous, go as fast as you can for 40 kilometres, and then take no risks. Well, that's the word from George Hincapie. Well, as we're watching here, the race continue. The rider in our frame is Michael Bogart. Here's our Camelback Tour trivia question. When was the first time trial held in the Tour de France? If you were listening before, I didn't know this question. I even told you the answer, so you should get that one right, surely. Anyway, we'll take a break, and if you didn't, we'll confirm it when we come back after the tour. Now, welcome back to our time trial today. The Camelback Tour trivia question. When was the first time trial held in the Tour de France? The answer was 1934. Anton Manu won an 80-kilometre time trial en route to his overall victory in the 1934 Tour. Well, this is Denny Menchoff here now, about to make his start. And he is the top white jersey rider, the best rider under 26 years of age. He's held it for about two weeks, this lead, and he's not going to be passed now because he's got a very, very good lead as he makes his start. And, well, looking down here at the mist, we're going out to the course again now as we catch up with the Jean de, la, Jean de la Tour. This is a team which is looking for a secondary sponsor next year to stay in the sport ball, and they've had a very, very good tour. I think all of the French teams have had a good tour visibly because they've always been on the attack. They've always been French riders in the breakaways, and uh, they are looking to, to try and stay in the team as, at the end of the season. This is Stefan Goubert and he was uh, fairly aggressive in the Tour a couple of years ago, finishing quite high up in the overall classification. But a lot of the French rival riders, they seem not to have the firepower or the, the desire to get themselves a stage win, and they have been heavily criticised by certain members of the press for riding for publicity rather than to actually win stages. Jose Azevedo, the man that stopped by his fallen leader, Joshiba Balocchi, back in gap a long time ago now when we were leaving the Alps, and as a result, he's down the overall classification a ways, but he's still put in another good time trial. Top uh, 35, maybe just getting inside the first 40 riders at the moment. This is at the checkpoint at 32.5 kilometres, and David Miller had set the best time here of 35.34. Miller has set the best time at the next checkpoint and the finish at the moment. But Miller saying the last 15 kilometres of the course is very, very treacherous. It's certainly caught out a number of riders as far as we know, Uwe Peschel has gone out with a broken rib. Well, not gone out, he's finished. And I hope that because of rib, there's no treatment for a broken rib, they can strap him up and he can ride into the finish on the Champs-Élysées tomorrow. But uh, he was leading until he went down, not once, but twice. Well, in fact, it's so sad to come out of the Tour de France right towards the end. I remember it happening to Sean Yates a couple of years ago when he crashed with about two days to go and his throat swelled up and he couldn't breathe and he had to abandon the tour. This is Carlos Sastre, teammate of Tyler Hamilton. He is in 10th place in the overall classification, so there are only nine riders to come up to the starting gate after him. 
the times uh, at the intermediary points are hardly changing at all right now and I don't expect they will until men like Ulrich and Armstrong get out on course so there for Carlos down the ramp into the rain take it very easy off that ramp we've seen riders fall off that and then get up and have to continue because once they start their clock starts and that is it this looks like watch off coming up towards the finish now this is brush out oh brush out okay. Well, on brush up taking risks going around the corner as well and uh, this is such a very difficult approach to the line as well as we come in here to nod the last time there was a well the first time there was a time trial in the tour de france it was a 90 kilometer time trial into the finishing line in Nantes, and the average speed on that occasion was 35 and a half kilometers now good ride by lauren brochard and uh, he comes in uh, losing two and a half minutes but a good average speed at 51.9 kilometers an hour former champion of the world oh well that's uh, an unhappy picture for the riders today and i should imagine that lance armstrong and jan ulrich have a lot of consternation here because the end of the stage is absolutely treacherous today we're going to see them all the way they must take care george hincapi has suggested to lance already since he finished he goes fast for 40 kilometers and plays safe for the last 10. Uh, because the roads are so dangerous within the area of Nantes. This is Stefan Gouwer still making his way. Looks as though he's picking his way uh, quite uh, precariously there. This is Botcheroff now, the teammate uh, of uh, Brochard. He's out at the check at 32 kilometers and just riding his time trial very sensibly. Nothing to gain or lose here, going through with the time just on the 80th time of the day. You can see his face there, concentrating in slow motion. Those legs working like pistons. As we go back to the sort house briefly and look here at Mansebo. He'll be next to go. We'll be back. And we'll take a quick break on the OL. Welcome back to a rather wet city of Nantes today. But the riders still have to go to the purgatory of the individual time trial. David Miller still is the fastest man at the finish with 54 minutes at 05 as we watch the start here by Mancebo, which means there are now eight riders left to come out of that start house. The last two will go head to head for the Tour de France title. Ulrich versus Armstrong, and they couldn't have asked for a worse day in which to go to war. There is still a huge crowd watching this race. So Roberto Harris at the other end should be arriving. Here he comes. At least I think he does, yes. Pops around the corner. Now, this is not going to be an outstanding ride. This was about two minutes ago, actually. He just went outside of the hour and quite a long way down the overall standings. Top man from France here now, Christophe Moreau from Credit Agricole, had a very, very good Tour de France indeed. He's been a former wearer for the day of the, uh, of the yellow jersey but not this year and uh, Morrow is a rider now who wants to stay top Frenchman a few deep best concentration he knows if he does a good time trial today and Christophe Moreau will be the man who's going to be acclaimed the best Frenchman of the centennial tour and that will mean a lot this is his eighth Tour de France he was disqualified in 1998 I suspect for pacing in the mountains and he crashed out of the race on stage 15 last year. The previous year, he won the prologue. That was in Dunkirk, wasn't it, Paul? And he kept his lead for a couple of days. He did. I don't think his place will change in the overall classification because he's three minutes behind the rider in front of him and he's uh, a couple of minutes ahead of the rider behind him. So he should finish there, whereas a lot of the other riders, uh, with a good performance today, could change their position one way or another. Laurent Dufault struggling with the time trial here at the second time check. He's already three minutes behind the time set by David Miller. David Miller's time uh, remarkably still the best one at the finish line, a time of 54.05 on the finishing line, which uh, I can't believe was set with a crash in the last 15 kilometers as well. Well, there's no doubt that Miller has come in with a cut leg. He's saying the course is dangerous. Uh, he says that they, they should neutralize the race over the last 15 kilometers because it is too dangerous and that it shouldn't be expected for Ulrich and Armstrong to race in these conditions for the result in the Tour de France. But they are going to, of course. This is Chechu Rubiera at the check at 32 and a half kilometers.
Well, as Rubiera comes through here, round 19th place for him. Now, this boy's got the right idea. Instead of being with the water on him, he's in the water. We'll take a break on OLN. See you in a moment. And welcome back. The River Loire, the longest river in France, pours out into the Atlantic here in Nantes. And the riders are riding beneath pouring rain. Tyler Hamilton has now entered the start house. Name, please, Hamilton. Sign here. Now, Hamilton, this is a huge day for Tyler Hamilton. It's in his seventh Tour de France. He now knows he can still climb up the overall positions. Well, it's a big ass pull. I think everybody's agreed he can't catch him in a clear off, but he could get the other two, surely. Well, I think he can get the other two because, in fact, uh, Tyler Hamilton starts uh, only about a minute and 19 seconds behind Zubeldia mm. and a minute and 10 seconds behind Mayo. He is a very good individual time trialist. He may well be just that little bit too far behind Vinokurov because he needs to pull back three minutes and 50 seconds. But in this very strange, yeah. very dramatic Tour de France, I'm not making any predictions. No, and we, we won't want any one of these top riders to fall off uh, over the next 49 minutes. Kilometers. Hamilton then is ready. He's warmed up, raring to go. Bjorn Arise, his manager, brought him to the line with his overcoat on. He's taken that off, obviously, now and put him into the start house. There's the two Spanish boys, the Euskatel Uscardi team. Big pressure on them because they're taking a good look at Tyler Hamilton because they know he is the man that could disrupt their great progress for a big result in Paris tomorrow. Zubeldia started so well in this tour and has never really lost his edge at all. He is a real good time trial is it'll be hard for Hamilton to nail him but he'll go for Mayo that's for sure Hamilton is away most important time trial of his life I would think this is the man who fractured his collarbone on day two his best ever finish in a Tour de France was 1999 when he was 13th now with his injuries at Tau he is currently in sixth place and he's racing to go higher Jorg Jatsk I would expect this is out on the course yes it is 32.5 kilometers for him and another good ride coming out of this man. He's really had a good tour. He's a great bike rider. He's uh, going to finish uh, in the top 10 placings at the second time check here at 32 and a half kilometers covered. And he's an integral part of the Spanish Once team. He's a man who helped them to uh, win the team time trial last year. And this year they finished in second place. And it's so sad when we look down at Jorg Yetz here because this man was uh, at the side of the road for four or five minutes waiting for his teammate Yoshiba Baloki to try and get back up and onto the bike but it was later revealed to us that in fact he hadn't only broken his leg but also his elbow and a finger in what was a very dramatic crash in the second week of the Tour de France on the road into Gap. So Yats once uh, held the white jersey briefly in the 2001 Tour, didn't win it though. This is now in his fifth Tour de France, he's never ever packed in. His best tour, ironically, his first tour when he was 18th in 1998. Uh, but he's currently lying 18th in this one and he knows that a good time trial today and he'll get his best ever finish in Paris and look at that face I think that's his intention his intention is to do well but this man has to do a good performance as well because we are now looking into the face of Iban Mayo maybe we're looking into the face of the future of Spanish cycling because this man has huge talent he's fifth overall at the moment a good ride by him could move him up ahead of his teammate Zubeldia in fact Zubeldia and Mayo are only separated by nine seconds in the overall classification well I think we can definitely say that will change and we think Zubeldia will be the faster of the two of them but uh you know, 10 seconds better than Zubeldia and 2.41 better than Vinokurov. It's going to be tough. Now, waiting for the countdown. There are three minutes now in the start house. You must stay calm, cool and collected. All of the effort will be in the charge from the start. I was a bit surprised to see these two riders come up so early for their start time. They should really have uh, remained in the in the bus or somewhere away from the weather conditions until the very last moment. But uh, the two riders have been... This man has been uh, at the bottom of the starting ramp for three minutes. His teammate, Zubeldia, has, will have been there for six minutes because he was actually at the starting ramp when Tyler Hamilton moved away. By the way, at 15 kilometres, the situation, Peschel was the best time there, but Miller was second. Well, Peschel crashed out of the leaderboard, uh, although he did finish the time trial, but apparently with a broken rib now. And uh, Miller has picked up the best time at all of the checkpoints, and despite a crash, has still come in with the best time. It's quite a while ago now, in fact. It's over an hour since Miller finished, and the riders are coming 
and we're looking at the checks out on the course and no one is rivaling Miller's time and you know he may have taken the risk that will win the day because these conditions are treacherous and Daniello Nardello is demonstrating that to us as he swings into the straight here 36 38 we're dropping down quite rapidly now but again this man nothing to race for in the time trial except to make sure he finishes the Tour de France but even so when you think Paul riding just in, in miles 30 and a half miles these guys are way inside the hour incredible speed unbelievable performances again that's a ride that's pretty close to 32 miles an hour by Daniel Inardelli he was so close to winning the stage yesterday losing out in that rather tricky sprint finish uh, even though the finish was straight as a die one or two riders uh, really misjudging the charge of the line and certainly one who did was Carlos de Cruz the Frenchman who thought until 20 meters to go he'd got himself the win well the face there of Daniela who's always been a very consistent rider in the Tour de France and uh, he was the champion of Italy too this is his sixth tour he's finished every one of them only stage when he's ever had was in Carpentras in 1998 but he's had some good results he was 10th in 2000 and he was also 18th it was 8th rather in 1998 now the face here of the other man on the start line to go. This will be Zubeldia, Heimar Zubeldia. Paul, he's ridden two very strong time trials. If he does it again, he'll hang on to at least his fourth place. Well, he's been the big revelation to me, I think, in the Tour de France this year. We expected Iban Mayo to ride well. We expected him to be well up in the overall classification. But this man really did create the surprise in the opening day prologue because he was well up at the top with all of the greats. And he reconfirmed that time trial performance in that very difficult time trial from Gaillac to Cap de Couvert. And today, a good ride by him could pull him up into a third-place position because he starts 2.31 behind Alexander Vinokurov. Concentration on his face right now as the wind just batters down from the left-hand side. It, it's a very strong wind, a constant wind, around about 30 kilometers an hour coming off the Atlantic coast. And that's why we're seeing speeds of uh, approaching record performances well, David Miller has taken chances and I'm not too sure whether Ulrich and Armstrong when they know the time switch will push that hard they want to get to the Paris tomorrow in the top places still the rain is coming down we're waiting for the last deep breaths from Heimar Zubel who hopes that the magical time trials he's done so far will continue in the Tour de France as he gets ready to go, up next will be Vinokurov, Ulrich Armstrong. We'll take a break. And welcome back. The top three are about to start in the time trial. This man was once just 19 seconds behind Lance Armstrong. He's now 2 minutes 47. Alexander Vinokurov is running down to the count to the off. Now, last uh, couple of seconds before he makes the move. And then is he going to ride to save his third place in the Tour and go to Paris tomorrow? as the highest placed rider ever from Kazakhstan because his friend and teammate who sadly was killed this year cycling in the Pyrenees race and Andrea Kivalev uh, he finished fourth in the Tour de France a couple of years ago well, he's on the way he's 29 years of age by the way now weighs uh, 159 pounds he won Pyrenees for the last two years and this year he won a World Cup classic race the Amstel Gold in Holland their biggest race and uh, just before this race began, he was a great winner of the Tour de Suisse, or the Tour of Switzerland, which Lance Armstrong also won once a couple of years ago before he went on to win the Tour de France. Looks a bit relaxed in the early part of the course there. He hasn't quite got down into his aerodynamic position just now. And the weather conditions you can see at the start are the same as they have been since the very first rider left the starting gate at 10.49 this morning. That was Hans de Klerk. He's uh, back here and comfortable, but this is what the big battle is all about. The clash of the titans, it's being called. He looks very nervous right now. He reckons that he is relaxed, but uh, I tell you what, this, he realises, uh, has to be the most important time trial of his career. Jan Ulrich is back. There's no one in any doubt about that. This is the man of a couple of years ago, the man who won the Tour de France in 1997. He has never finished worse than second in this race. We thought this would be the year when he would do just that. But no, he's fought alongside Armstrong. He now knows his worst finish will again be second. But he believes, Paul, he can win the Tour. 
listen to the crowd they're going absolutely balmy out there shouting for this man and look at the handlebar position that he's got there as well Phil this man looks very nervous to me you can almost feel his body trembling getting ready for the violent effort that he's about to go for right now 49 kilometers and I tell you what we may well be looking at a new record speed for an individual time trial at the Tour de France 54.54 is the average speed that he needs to beat and I have a funny feeling that we'll see that drop tonight he leaves three minutes behind Alexander Vinokurov he leaves three minutes in front of Lance Armstrong Armstrong will know exactly what his time is when he passes through the three checks out on the course Ulrich I am quite sure will also be told by the team management in the car behind the rain is the same for everybody it's been totally consistent it's not gone away it's not come back there's been no sun the wind has stayed at the same strength so they can't claim the conditions have altered the situation here these boys now are one on one and the strongest man will win the tour de france it is as simple as that after three weeks of cycling incredible seventh tour de france for Yang. second in 96 first in 97 second in 98 second in 2000 second in 2001 question mark on 2003 there's no way we will know that until 49 kilometers has gone by and he's come out of the starting gate like a bull but when the battle for the yellow jersey comes down to the final time trial historically it's the cha challenger who comes out on top think about these names Le Monde, Roche, Hino and Jan Janssen they have all won it with victory in the final time trial Wow, don't use that line over Lance Armstrong, Paul, when he comes in the start house. That's uh, going to send shivers down his spine. But Ulrich is underway now, and he's got to also throw caution to the wind, despite the fact that the conditions are reported as treacherous. David Miller has sent messages back saying they should neutralise the race in the last 15 kilometres. The roads are too slippery. It's not fair for Ulrich and Armstrong. Those were his words. The difference between the two riders is Ulrich has absolutely nothing to lose. He finishes out of the race or he finishes in first place. Now, right there, Armstrong is coming up and... Uh, Talking to all of the men who have been in this situation before, people like Stephen Roach, people like Laurent Fignon, the night before the final time trial, they were worried when it was so close. Armstrong looks a lot more relaxed than Ulrich did when he came into the starting gate. Don't forget, we might have mentioned those big names before, like Le Monde and Fignon and Roach. This man has not yet ever been beaten in the final time trial of the Tour de France. But he's never gone into the final time trial with such a small margin of advantage. It's one minute and five seconds. On the right now, because our cameras are going to stay with these guys right around this course, is Jan Ulrich. He's underway. He will already know how it feels, how his body is warming to the occasion or not. He'll know whether he's firing as he wants to do or he's actually fighting the effort. In the start house, and he's still got just a little while to go, just on two minutes before Lance Armstrong will make his departure. And then this incredibly interesting Tour de France will come down to one-on-one -on -one over 49 kilometers what a story it's unbelievable that it has come down to this after three weeks of bike racing the final 49 kilometer individual time trial Armstrong has put got to put everything behind him right now the the crash on the first day But Phil I can't get over how even at a moment like this in the Tour de France He's always seemed to be relaxed this year and by he the has, way he has. He's just been awarded the Prix Orange by the journalists as being the most approachable rider a couple of years ago He was awarded the one for being the worst man with the press absolutely try he used to get what did they call it? the Prix, Prix Citron. Citron. Citron the lemon man because nobody uh, could ever get an interview with Lance Armstrong but from day one this man has been extremely friendly this year. That is quite a tribute uh, to Lance, who has been very approachable. Now, this is it. The composure, you can feel it breathing at us through the television screen. He gets the countdown, he's off. Wait for the cheers. And whether you can hear them out there in Pornick, but I've got the race radio in my ear as the, cl the crowd there clap him away. The last man to start of the survivors of 148 riders in this year's Tour de France, 198 started 50 have fallen some quite literally by the wayside lance armstrong again in yellow it's his 12th day in yellow today if he's still in yellow tonight he wins the tour de france tomorrow it's as simple as that
Well, don't make it quite that simple because if he's in the yellow jersey tonight by 10 seconds, it, the trouble. battle will happen on the Champs Elysees. He takes that first corner there very precariously. In about 15 minutes, we should get an idea of just how the two big men at the top end of the overall classification are performing because the first time check at 15 kilometers is currently held by Uwe Peschel in a time of 15 minutes and 54 seconds. And I think these two men will go there inside of that time. Well, 15.54 Peschel, 15.58 Miller, Peschel crashed, Miller has set the best time at all of the other checks and has come home so far with the best time. They will get the best time purely by accident because they are racing each other and that's all that will matter to Lance Armstrong and Jan Ulrich, the man who is in front. If Ulrich starts fast like he did the other week to the Cap de Couvert, let's not forget, Paul, the first check then, they were exactly equal on time, but slowly but surely, Lance drifted away. We're looking at the legs now of Jan Ulrich. Our cameras are going to switch between the two now. There is the start of Jan Ulrich. He's off. Armstrong is off. The Tour de France is about to be decided. Stay with us on OLN. Welcome back to the Tour de France. We look at a massive crowd here now. The yellow jersey cutting a trail is Lance Armstrong. Just three minutes up the road is Jan Ulrich. 15 kilometers is the first check. Now, as we look here at Lance Armstrong, before the start this morning, Jan, uh, sorry, Frankie Andreu, as part of our US Postal update, is talking now with Johan Brunil. I'm here with Johan Brunil, a very rainy day today. Johan, this morning you went out and drove the course with Lance. Is this course anything specific to change because of the rain? Yes, definitely. I think uh, the beginning of the of the ride is no no problem at all. It's pretty much all flat and straight. But uh, a few little towns where we pass, mainly the, the first checkpoint, the second checkpoint, and especially the last uh, seven eight kilometers, are uh, really tricky. And uh, there's a few roundabouts, some dangerous corners. So with this rain, uh, you really have to pay attention. So um, I hope everything I, I hope everything goes safe. For Lance, it's very important that he goes as quick as possible. Do you have riders going out to give checkpoints for him to judge his time by, or do you have any people on the side of the course? Yeah, we had Eki and uh, Victor Hugo. They went fast. They have, for the moment, they have the second and the third best uh, finish time. And uh, I was just with both of them on the phone also to get to get their impression. Lance was talking with them on the phone to get their impression about certain things on the right. And uh, we also have a few people standing on uh, on certain points to have extra. Uh, reference points, refer uh, check, check times with, uh, with Ulrich. Speaking with Lance, it, as he said, how he's feeling for today. Does, does the rain even bother him? Uh, you know, it's, I think it's, the rain is an advantage for him. Uh, the question is, uh, you have to find the balance and, and, and riding good in the rain and not taking too much risks because you cannot, you cannot risk a crash. Or, uh, but um, I'm definitely happy that it's not hot today because I think that's good for Lance. All right, thank you, Johan. You're welcome. And so where are the U.S. Postal team in the time trial today? The, at the moment, Ekimov is holding third place. Victor Hugo Pena is in fourth. He's a fantastic result. George Hincapi is there in fifth. So the USP boys quite clearly finishing the Tour de France in fine style. Beltran and Armstrong, of course, still to finish. Now, Lance Armstrong here started. He was out a little bit to the start to Ulrich. Ulrich now seems to have steadied as Armstrong has closed the gap a little bit. Well, those big legs of Lance Armstrong look as though they're pounding in rhythm at the moment. We know that uh, Iban Mayo has now got through and not with a great time. He's a little bit off the pace with 16 minutes and 33 seconds. And uh, Hamilton has got third place at the first check with Peschel, who is the best time at that check, out. Zubeldi has also gone through with the eighth best time, just 22 seconds off Peschel's time as well. So the head-to-head -head is on, and Zubeldia not letting the side down, I don't think. 
Great bike rider, Heimar Zubeldi, and I think the great revelation to us all here at the Tour de France. An eighth place uh, at the 15-kilometre mark indicates that he started fast, he started well. I think Armstrong seems to be pretty much up to scratch as well for the moment. Unofficial time checks coming through to us that, in fact, over the first few kilometres, Jan Ulrich was five seconds faster than Armstrong. The quick calculation is if Jan Ulrich wants to beat Armstrong, he actually has to beat him by one and a half seconds for every kilometre of this race this afternoon and they're locked in right now, Phil. It's almost exactly the same speed over the last two kilometres. So six seconds Ulrich at the moment has recovered in his yellow jersey. That's what that means on the computer. He's now one minute behind Lance in the race for yellow. Lance was a bit further back than that earlier and he started to close it back down. So he is getting into his rhythm. Ulrich also will be aware of what Lance is doing. Don't forget Zubeldia is uh, in the race for the minor places is losing a little bit of time to Hamilton as in Mayo Mayo in fact is losing quite a lot of time Zubeldi has lost 10 seconds now to Tyler Hamilton while uh, it's 27 seconds Mayo has lost so Hamilton is hunting for them He's looking to try and move up in the overall classification. If he can get himself up to fourth, that would be a remarkable performance. But Zubeldia is also riding to try and get himself into third place if he can. We should, in a few moments' time, be getting the time of Alexander Vinokurov. He's third last to start. And then we get the first official time checks of the last two men, Jan Ulrich and Lance Armstrong. For the moment, both of them look to be in fine form, and there's no real difference between them. Armstrong has his normal position. A nice high cadence between 100 and 110 revolutions for every minute, which is quite remarkable in the level of the sport we're at nowadays. Oh, Armstrong's face is telling us the stories he tried to keep up there with the effort he's making. This now is Jan Ulrich, who's three minutes ahead of him on the road. Don't forget, he's probably six minutes further in front. Six seconds, I beg your pardon. Further in front at the moment, but he is continuing. They are both looking, as we expected, Paul, as though they are going very well. Well, they're both going for it. This man has absolutely nothing at all to lose, and the decision, I don't think, will be made until we get into the streets of uh, Nantes towards the end of the 49-kilometre time trial. I hope neither of these riders take too many risks, and I hope neither of them comes off as it appears. Many riders have done so far in this event this afternoon because the run into the finish, the last 10 to 15 kilometres, is very tricky, and I hope the team car drops back a bit because he's a bit too close for my liking. And mine too at the moment. We've gone back now to Lance Armstrong, and we're going to keep Keep on switching around here now as we watch these two fantastic bike riders fight out this year's Tour de France. It is locked. They haven't gained or lost a second in the last two kilometres. Ulrich is still a minute behind in the overall, but he's going six seconds quicker. These men are the two best time trialists in the world. Armstrong just appears to be pulling back an extra second there. If we look back at Jan Ulrich, he's been a great individual time trialist. We get the time coming through at 15 kilometres. Alexander Vinokurov has put in a very fine ride there. 12th fastest time there, just 30 seconds off the lead. Yes, but Hamilton's going better. He's conceded 18 seconds at the moment to Tyler Hamilton at that first check. Well, as we watch here, Jan Ulrich continue on his way. He is, we believe, going six seconds quicker at the moment than Lance Armstrong. That isn't good enough to help him win the Tour, but it's a start. We'll take a break. And welcome back. Jan Ulrich is approaching now 15 kilometres into the time trial of his life. Lance Armstrong rides at three minutes behind, and there it is. Ulrich has set the best time at 15 kilometres, 15.41. He's top of the leaderboard with only Lance to arrive now at that 15 kilometre check. We think Lance is possibly riding about two seconds slower. Well, there's the town ahead. It won't be long, Paul, before uh, Lance Armstrong is through it. 104, it's hovering between 104, 103 is what they are saying on the computer, Paul. And this now means it's almost as we were at the start. Well, Le Car au Général is basically explaining the difference in the overall classification between the two men. At the start of the day, they were separated by a minute and five seconds. After a couple of kilometres, in fact, Ulrich had pulled it back, the deficit between them, to 59 seconds. But Armstrong is now getting into his stride, picking up the pace, and they're almost, as you say, just exactly the same distance apart as they were when they got into the starting gate this morning. Well, they are battling out the result of the Tour de France here. If Armstrong keeps his minute-plus 
all the way to the end of this time trial he will win the Tour de France if Ulrich could have taken maybe 45 seconds off him on the road today and it would have gone down to the big the final day in Paris where small time bonuses could well have made the difference we are still waiting for Lance Armstrong to arrive at a Chimere, which is where they check the riders through at that point we're going back up the road here to see Christophe Moreau you see that David Miller at this point was setting the best time of 35 34 Moreau it's still a very important time trial for this man from France he wants to go home as the best Frenchman in the race Tomorrow started the day in eighth place in the overall classification. Just a, an average ride by him will keep him in that eighth place because the men in front and behind him are separated by a large amount. Armstrong has gone through second, but with exactly the same time as Jan the, Ulrich. Exactly the same as one week ago. Exactly the same as one week ago. These guys are unbelievable. A time trial head to head. The first check. History repeats down at De, De Cap Couvert. They were the same time. Now they're the same time again. 15.41. Unbelievable. Armstrong, I think, is riding his own time trial. He won't want to know the position of Jan Ulrich out on the course. He just needs to ride his own performance. We could today be looking at the fastest time trial ever recorded in the Tour de France, and that, uh, over the longer distances, is currently held by Greg LeMond, and the average speed there, 54.54 kilometres an hour. David Miller came in with a very fast time. His average speed was 54.3 54 kilometres an hour. But these two men are battling out for supremacy at the top end of the Tour de France. And after all, Phil, over the last six or seven years, they have been the creme de la creme of individual time trialling. Well, as a matter of pride here, as they go one on one, Armstrong looking extremely comfortable, even though obviously it's hurting. It's going to hurt at these speeds. We could be chasing the fastest ever time trial seen in the history of the Tour de France. Greg LeMond holds that back in 1989. 54.545 kilometers and in the prologue it was the British rider Chris Boardman 55.152 Armstrong is riding close to the crowd line he wants the shortest way around this route he does know the course he's ridden it in training he knows what to expect he didn't expect the rain but Johan Brunel has said the rain really is more pleasant for us the important thing I think to remember as well is that Armstrong actually went out in the team car this morning and had a look at the course. He wanted to refresh his memory. He'd actually been over it before earlier on in the year in the month of April, so he knew the course but just wanted to get the corners back into his mind. Ulrich decided he didn't want to go out, in fact, and he just watched it on a video at the team hotel, his team manager having recorded it earlier in the day. The top three riders are still the same top three riders overall as they were in the start house. One minute and five seconds instead of one minute and six, they are saying now, is the split in the overall classification between these two riders. Armstrong would settle for that. There's confirmation of that, 105, which indicates that uh, Ulrich, uh, taking into account the fraction of the second, is riding the route one second quicker than Armstrong at this moment in time. A split only by thousandth of a second at the first check, 15.42 time between them at the start this morning was 105 Armstrong looking completely perfect on his machine here right now and it looks as if he's staring up the road to see if he can just see the back wheel of Jan Ulrich they are separated by exactly three minutes and that's exactly the gap that they started this final time trial here of the Tour de France 49 kilometers for destiny well, they are locked together, as I think we expected at some stage, because these two riders are so equal in ability. Ulrich searching for something special now as he runs out of time. We'll take a break on our end. And welcome back, and this is the other American in the Tour de France, Tyler Hamilton, fighting for a high finish, and he's running David Miller close here as he comes up to the second point, a point two, 32 and a half kilometers. He was running third at the first checkpoint, and now it looks as though he might just be outside Miller's time here because the clock will stop a little bit up the home straight here. This is Boué, and he's going to go through with the second best time, I think, because the clock will stop and it won't take much longer. 35.42, they are saying. The clock has stopped 56 kilometers an hour, and Hamilton is now in second place at that check. Now looking here at Lance Armstrong, he's a bit further down the road. He is now 28 kilometers from the finish of this time trial, and he is beginning, I think, Paul, to go in front of Ulrich. 
Well, these are unofficial time checks we've got out on the course, but uh, if they are true, he's in fact four seconds faster than Jan Ulrich at the moment. And I was just looking and casting my mind back to Jan Ulrich in the starting gate. He appeared to be so nervous. His body was almost trembling as he got himself up into the starting gate, knowing how important this individual time trial was going to be. I think the important thing to remember about the yellow jersey and wearing and holding the yellow jersey is the pressure that builds up with having this golden fleece on your shoulders over 10 or 15 days again another time check it's still let's not forget these are unofficial time checks but it is indicating that Armstrong and Ulrich are separated by four seconds in the individual time trial which gives Armstrong again a slightly greater advantage well the thing is if he's not gaining anything Armstrong will win the tour because he starts the day with 65 seconds uh, to the good he's got to lose that first before Ulrich can build on it and Ulrich has uh, actually lost at the moment between four and five additional seconds so things are looking good and now as we look at the 32 kilometer check it was Miller by the way who's still the best time there but Hamilton has roared through that ball second best time because a uh, poor old uh, Uwe Peschel has gone off the off the leaderboard now because he crashed in this uh, sector we're looking at now and they crashed again approaching the finish and believes have broken his rib uh, so we're looking uh, always now David Miller from Britain he's the target for these riders his target is a time of 54 minutes and 5 seconds and almost 54.3 kilometers an hour. The face of Armstrong is complete concentration right now. Just He knows what he has to do. He knows what speed he wants to do. And he knows he wants to try and get himself not only the win in the time trial this afternoon, but also in the Tour de France as well. It's a double header for him. Iban Mayo putting in a fairly reasonable time there as he comes through with the 19th best time at the second time check. He's a minute and 26 seconds down on Miller, but what's important for him is the position of his own teammate in the overall classification because he is only nine seconds behind Zubeldia at the end of the day. Well, Mayo has already conceded a minute and 19 seconds there to Tyler Hamilton, so that means Hamilton's already over him in the overall classification, and if he builds on that, he'll be searching for Zubeldia. Now, what's the banner saying up here? Might just be drinks all round, but no, it says 25 kilometres to go. Those last five kilometres have flown by. Unbelievable. These guys are covering these kilometres at around about one minute and five seconds, and that's pretty close to 55, 56 kilometres an hour. Ulrich is sitting very far forward on the saddle. I don't think he's got it this afternoon. Well... Well, I have to say, Paul, you might be right. He's made a big start, and it hasn't quite come to the good, but we'll know, have confirmation that when he gets to Boué at 32 kilometres. But one thing's for sure, he's going to have to take risks on the roads all the way through Nantes to the finish to stay in the hunt for the yellow jersey. We'll be back in a moment. And welcome back to the Tour de France time trial. The rain continues. Menchov finishes 28th place for him. He keeps that white jersey now. It's his tomorrow in Paris. Looking at Zabeldi here now. Now he's coming up to point number two here. And in fact, uh, he better watch out because Hamilton's closing in on him. Now 36.50 for Zabeldi, Paul. Uh, it looks to me as though Tyler Hamilton might claim both uh, Spanish scalps. He's around about nine seconds off right now. The time difference between them at the start of the day was a minute and 19 seconds. And in fact, uh, quick check, he's, uh, he's 11 seconds away from moving into fourth place. And I have a feeling he may well do that over the last uh, 17 kilometers of this race. Armstrong right now, he's flying into town, but he has to be very careful. Don't forget, this man is an exceptionally good bike handler and he can go downhill very in very wet conditions. And uh, it's a pity about the picture breakup. It's probably two to the speed. Well, we're looking here at Lance Armstrong. He's safely negotiated the little town there. Now, you know, yesterday evening, Frankie Andreo did ask Lance Armstrong what was likely to be the winning time. What do you predict to be a winning time? A fast one. <laughs> How fast? Uh, probably a record. Probably to a record. That man is uncanny because that's exactly what is likely to happen right now as we look at Alexander Vinokurov coming through here and he's still riding a good time trial. I think Paul at Vinokurov here is going to hold that third place line for one. I'm not unhappy about that. He's had a great tour. 
Uh, he should do. He's got a pretty good advantage and a big buffer over Zubeldia. In fact, he's uh, two and a half minutes ahead of Zubeldia. But I think more importantly, he's three minutes, 50 seconds ahead of Tyler Hamilton. Just a little bit too far away for Hamilton to think about getting the podium position. But I do think that Hamilton will move up into fourth by the end of the day. Well, he's conceded a minute and six seconds to Hamilton there. And remember, he's at 32 kilometres now. 49, he should hold his place, but it does look as though Tyler Hamilton will climb to fourth in the Tour de France as well. Looking at the board here, the split says now Ulrich at 1-0-2. There seems to be a revival back there. It's twisting and turning the other way right now because the acceleration in the middle part of the course is coming from Jan Ulrich. He's kicking in the turbo right now as we go into the second section here. He's pulled back a further few seconds. We get a time here at the time check. Now, this is the second point. 32 and a half kilometers covered in the town of Boué. The time to beat is that of David Miller, 35-34. And as we come up to it, Jan Ulrich is going to stop the clock a lot faster than Miller's time. Well, Ulrich, don't forget, started three minutes behind Vinokurov. We've not long ago seen Alexander Vinokurov pass through this point with a time of 36.48. So Jan Ulrich, his face a picture of effort, is going to be closing the gap on Vinokurov. I can't believe he'll catch him at three minutes, but he might. The crowd straining here to see this mighty man from Germany. He just pounds those pedals down. As he comes up towards the best time, 35, seven, is the clock still going? But I think, no, 35, 19, best time. Best time right now, 35, 19 to David Miller's 35, 34. This man, and look at the average speed, it's almost 57 kilometers an hour. The fastest time trial ever over the longer distance is 54. The time trial set by Chris Boardman was only over six kilometers, and that was 55 kilometers and an Lance hour. And Lance Armstrong has predicted a record speed in the Tour de France. We always uh, qualify the prologue time trials away from the long distance time trials because they're only a couple of kilometers, they're bound to be faster. We are now doing the fastest ever time trial over any distance. I do think it'll slow down a little bit as we come into town because it is very technical and very dangerous in the last part of the course. Armstrong making another comeback. He's pulling it back to equality once again. These I guys are it. absolutely superb. They are the two best men in the Tour de France. They really are remarkable. They've battled it out in the mountains. They've battled it out on the descents. And right now, they are neck and neck in the individual time trial. The time has been quite, quite confirmed there by Jan Ulrich at that second time check. as 35 minutes and 19 seconds. About two minutes' time, we should get qualification of what Armstrong is doing. Well, that is incredible. These two riders at 20 miles or 32 kilometers into the course seem to be riding completely locked together, three minutes apart on the road. We'll wait for Armstrong to confirm one way or the other. They were equal at the first check, 15.41 each. Now they're heading to this second check. Ulrich through with the best time on a record pace for any time trial in the history of the Tour. Unbelievable. This is uh, Jan Ulrich once again. He's a powerful bike rider. He has the fastest time check at 32 and a half kilometers. 35 minutes, 18 seconds to David Miller's 35-33. And it is an absolute corridor of people. And when you think, Phil, of the weather conditions, it's amazing that there are so many people out at the side of the road to see this Tour de France today because I think everybody in France and most of the people around the world realized that this was going to be a huge battle between these two men. Well, here comes Lance Armstrong. There's the time to beat at 32 kilometers, leaving him just 17 kilometers to ride to the finish. Just about 10 miles to go on the speed he's going. He'll do that 10 miles in round about 16 minutes. Armstrong heading up. It's going to be close, but I tell you what, this is a most incredible time trial. The fastest ever time trial, 55.152 kilometers an hour. Ulrich has gone through with a 56.91 kilometers an hour average speed. Now, what is Lance going to do? As he races up now, searching to beat the time of 35.19. He goes around the corner. He's got 10 seconds to hit the line. He's getting desperately close. One thing's for sure, they are still virtually identical in this time trial as we enter the last few kilometers. And the clock stops at 35.21. It is incredible, Paul. It is just over a second difference. Only just 
just over a second difference between Armstrong and Ulrich. It really is an unbelievable battle. Look at the concentration, though, on the face of Armstrong. The time trial result, Phil, is going to be decided on the run into Nantes and who has got the chance, the, the ability to take the most risks going round the corners in the outskirts of this very dangerous last 10 kilometres. Well, there is Lance Armstrong riding like a dream at the moment. This is the rider with the best time. Armstrong is going second officially. The gap is two seconds because we round to the whole second between the two of them. Armstrong's heading for his fifth Tour de France win. We'll take a break. And welcome back. Well, it is still good news for Lance Armstrong in as much he is in the yellow jersey. But we're coming at us with time checks now saying that Ulrich is riding seven seconds quicker than Lance. He is putting in a very strong finish indeed. Well, as we look at Lance Armstrong, I think we can go back to moments ago. This is the arrival of uh, Christophe Moreau coming in, leading Frenchman. Respectable ride by him, Moreau. He comes in with the 10th place time so far. Very good ride. He is a good time trial rider, though. And that will confirm his top French finish in the Tour de France, I think. But this man now, Tyler Hamilton, as he comes up to the finishing line here, he is up into second place behind Miller. Now, David Miller, the British rider, is in. 54.05. Hamilton is not going to beat that, but if he can just squeeze out a spin, he should hold second. Oh, Ulrich's gone oh. down. Ulrich is crashed. Well, we can't see Hamilton finish because this is what everybody is worried about. Ulrich has gone down and he was in the lead by about six seconds when he fell. We can look at this now. These are the grease on the roundabouts and they saw the sparks flying. Unbelievable. It is a very dangerous time trial. He's gone into the bales. Thank goodness there were bales at the side of the road. And uh, it was just the front wheel that was lost. The team manager was there very quickly indeed. The mechanic was up alongside. Now that's the same place where Uwe Peschel crashed Paul and broke his rib. So Ulrich is up and away. Ulrich's up and away. He doesn't seem to be injured, but what that will do, Phil, that will make him very nervous coming into the next few corners. He was going so well. He was two seconds ahead of Armstrong. These roads are becoming very slick as we get closer to the finish line here in Nord. There are so many riders have gone down in this time trial, and it is quite rare to see a time trial with so many crashes. So he's got to take it careful. It. Well, he's got to take it careful. You can see the glacial now. Now, David Miller said it was unfair these last 15 kilometres. Far too dangerous, far too slick and he thinks they shouldn't have subjected them to this course towards the end of the course. He will lose his nerve right now. A crash like that completely takes the nerves away from you for four or five kilometres because you're always looking down at the bike wondering if there's a problem with it. He needs now to get back up into his aerodynamic position. This is drama on the Tour de France and it is so sad that he has gone down because this man was winning the individual time trial and in a couple of minutes' time, Lance Armstrong is going to come into that very same corner. Well, I can tell you in the drama there that as Ulrich crashed, Hamilton finished with the second best time, nine seconds slower than David Miller, 54-14. But you know, as he fell, the computer for the race for yellow was indicating he was to the good by six seconds on the course. He'll have lost all of that, and quite clearly now, he's got to show respect to these roundabouts. Well, it's very dangerous that so we haven't even got into the real centre of Nantes and that's where it is even more dangerous because there are so many of these white pieces of paint on the road which are, are cro crossings for pedestrians and those crossings are unbelievably treacherous. Every bike rider who races in Europe knows what they're like but there's nothing you can do, you can't lift them up. It really is quite remarkable. He's got to find something now and he's uh, coming into these corners, Phil. You saw him looking over his shoulders. He's lost his nerve completely right now because of that crash. Well, he's no choice but to take those corners carefully. He's a problem. He's he waiting for the team problem. manager. He, I think he's saying stay further back from me. He's worried about the proximity of the team car in the event of a fall because the team car will slide as well. He's into the last 10 kilometers now. Jan Ulrich, I think, was six seconds quicker than Lance at this point, but that'll be swept away. And Lance Armstrong, too, has still to enter this corridor of great danger. It's unbelievable right now as he's pricking his way around this, co this course very precariously indeed. It is such a shame for the organisation that the rain has come down over these last few kilometres. It's only in the last 24 hours that the weather has changed as dramatically as this. Going through the 42-kilometre check, Armstrong is picking his way through. He's fine, he kept upright, but did you see how slow he had to go around that corner? He realises how dangerous this race is turning out to be.
Well, let me oh, go on the spin again. It is glacial out there, and this is what claimed David Miller and George Hincapie, you know, sent a message back to Lance when he finished, and his information was, Lance, it is super dangerous. Go as fast as you can for 40 kilometres, and then take no risks. The last 10 kilometres are glacial and highly dangerous. It's so important today to make sure that the tyre pressures were perfect. These guys would have been checking their tyre pressures over the last few minutes before they got into their, into their machines. Right now, Armstrong taking a better line around that corner. He hasn't come down so far. Touch wood. But I tell you what, he will know that Ulrich has gone down because the team manager is talking to him through a radio which is built into the helmet. Well, he's in a position, Paul. They're more or less equal on the road here to take it just that little bit slower and conserve what his gains are he doesn't have to build on them right now Ulrich in fact has gone through the third check now from best time to only third best time 22 seconds behind David Miller well Armstrong will know now the difference between himself and Jan Ulrich and I think he may well refuse to take risks coming into town I only hope that he can heed the advice passed on to him by George Hincapie his teammate who started early on in fact, uh, let's not forget that George Hincapie, in fact, has the sixth fastest time. The crash there has had a serious effect on the time difference between these two men, but not that much because Ulrich is a minute and 12 seconds separated by Armstrong in the overall classification. I think Armstrong himself Phil, has slowed down as we get into the tricky part of this I course. I do too. I agree with you, Paul, and he's got no reason to push it now. He doesn't want to finish up on the deck. He's done that a couple of times in this year's Tour de France. Here is the rival of Iban Mayo. A solid drive, but I don't think he's going to hold on to his fifth place overall as he comes in with the 16th best time of 56-16. Looks at the clock. Not a bad ride by any standards, but I don't think it'll hang on because Hamilton's already gone over him with his time. Hamilton has gone into uh, at least uh, fifth place right now and it's the time of Zubeldia will decide whether yeah. or not he's gone into fourth place as well. But the battle for the supremacy at the Tour de France is inside of 10 kilometres to go right now. Armstrong getting back down into his aerodynamic position. He needs to be very careful of these white bands down the centre of the road. But he has the advantage, Phil, of having ridden this course in the month of April. He came here. He is such a meticulous rider when it comes to preparing the Tour de France. And he also drove the course this morning in his team manager's car to look at it once more and get it fixed into his mind. Well, he is going very wisely around these corners. Ulrich is the man who's got to take risks and gain time because he won't win the Tour if he doesn't. When it all happened, by the way, he was 59 seconds off the race lead. He's now a minute 12 is the latest we have. And that crash, you know, it got sparks out the back of his bike as he hit the deck. He was lucky the road was so wet in as much that he slid and those bales of straw probably saved him from serious injury. He got up very quickly. He got up very quickly. In fact, that crash of Jan Ulrichs reminded me very much of a crash by Abraham Alano some time ago. And I have a feeling that the team manager is driving much too close to him and I think the team manager is probably making him nervous going around these corners right now. I think it's probably Rudy Pevenard. It is Rudy Pevenard. Yeah, well, he's an ex-green jersey winner of the Tour de France. Uh, but again, he keeps indicating to him, move away from me. I'm not sure whether... Uh, he wants to feel him that close if he falls again. It's making him very unrested. Well, if he rides that quickly in weather conditions, if, if he rides that close to his man in weather conditions like this, I remember Chris Boardman decking it in the prologue time in time San Brieux, yeah. and the team car was so close to hitting Boardman because you can't even control the car when you lock it up in conditions like this. Armstrong, Armstrong second. second. Armstrong has dropped now behind David Miller at the second check by 12 seconds. 45-29 to Miller's 45-17. So they're throwing the stage win away because they're locked in the battle for the final yellow jersey. But Armstrong and Ulrich are separated by 10 seconds and the 10 seconds go down to that crash. You see now how Armstrong is pricking, picking his way precariously around these corners. He does not want to go down at all. He does not want to suffer the same fate as Jan Ulrich. Ulrich was charging along in the time trial the best time check at 15 kilometers the best time check at 32 and then what a dramatic crash Zubeldia Phil has put in a very fine performance the difference between him and Tyler Hamilton is very important 
It certainly is, as Zubeldia spins the line now for 13th place. I think he's slowed down quite a lot here. You add on a minute 19, and if it doesn't add up to Tyler's time, 56.07. So 57.26, it means that Tyler Hamilton is now fourth in the Tour de France. Remarkable performance, sir. There are only three riders left to come in, and we've hardly seen Alexander Vinokurov out on the course, but he is uh, keeping hold of his third place in the overall classification. But I think the drama is at the back, the battle between these two men, the man in the yellow jersey, Lance Armstrong, and the man in the light blue jersey of Team Bianchi. Ulrich, despite that crash, Phil, has got back up into his aerodynamic position and has picked his pace back up again on the final kilometres of this stage. But it is still very tricky over the last four or five kilometres. Miller, Armstrong, Ekimov was the order at the last check as they're now heading in towards the finish where David Miller is the leader in the house at 54.05. He also fell off at three kilometres to go now for Jan Ulrich. Ulrich has been down, he's still got to take risks because this man can afford to lay back just a little bit and make no silly mistakes now. It is running the way of Lance Armstrong at this moment in time. Only by 10 seconds right now, but for Armstrong that's not important. All he's thinking about is keeping a big time buffer between himself and Jan Ulrich before tomorrow's final stage on the Champs-Élysées. Hats off to Ulrich after that very dramatic crash. He really seems to have got back into it because he's actually still holding Armstrong. And if it hadn't been for the crash, these men would have been still almost in exactly the same time. Yeah, I think if, if it hadn't been for the conditions, we might well have seen Jan Ulrich looking at about 50 seconds behind Armstrong tomorrow. And he might then have been forced to chase time bonuses. Uh, but now his tour is for second place. This man is coming into the last kilometre. His time on the leaderboards are indicating that he has a real good chance now of holding that third place. Hamilton has had a superb time trial, a man who doesn't ride that well in the rain. In fact, he crashed in the Tour de Pays Basque in very similar conditions when he should have won, and he lost on that occasion to Iban Mayo. Mayo is in, and he's gone over the top of Mayo today, so revenge sometimes, you know, is quite sweet. Vinokurov running towards the line now, the third-placed man in the Tour de France. Lance Armstrong very, very carefully swings up to this left-hand turn. He is being very wise. That'll be three kilometres to go, I think. No, four. Four kilometres to go for Lance. He, ne he didn't take any risks right now. He doesn't have to take any risks after all. He's leading the Tour de France, this man. He's leading it by a minute and five seconds this morning. There's a bit of confusion here as we try to get back up to Jan Ulrich. The team manager is right behind him all of the time. Rudy Pevenage has really been pushing Jan Ulrich, and I, for one, really believe that he's been much too close and probably creating his riders' nervousness. Well, here comes Vinokurov. He's made the city of Nantes, as far as we know, without falling off. He's sprinting for his third-place finish. 58.04 is what he doesn't want, and he's well in. 56.01, he gets his third-place confirmed with one day to go. Great ride by Vinokurov. He will be third tomorrow on the Champs-Élysées as the battle continues now between the last two men to come onto the finishing straight inside of 1,000 metres for Jan Ulrich and this has been an incredible battle at the moment the overall classification if we stop the race right now would be Armstrong, Ulrich, Vinokurov, Hamilton and Zubeldia but these two men still have to finish you know when Greg LeMond won the Tour de France in 86 Andy Hampson got the fourth place <laughs> amazing yeah it's amazing how history repeats itself on so many occasions. Armstrong is not taking any risks at all right now. He's listened to the warnings of his teammates who started earlier on in the day. Riders like Ekimov, Pena and George Hincapi. They sent the information back and explained to him just how dangerous the final few corners were. Well, there's no doubt that Jan Ulrich will be a very, very disappointed rider at the finish because he hasn't closed the gap. In fact, the, when we may find out very shortly, the opposite has, in fact, happened. He did seem to be getting into his rhythm. He did seem to be pulling away very slightly from Armstrong. Not enough to win the Tour de France, but maybe to have won the day. But he hasn't recovered from that rather nasty fall and slide. He's coming now towards the finishing line. There's a big uh, applause already started in the home straight. You can see the crowd for yourself. Well, one thing's for sure, Jan is back and he'll be here to fight another Tour de France in the future years. Only third on the line, though, 54-30. He never recovered from the crash. 
Well, you know what? We've kind of forgotten about the man who's leading the race at the moment, David Miller, because everybody else seems to have slowed down dramatically over the final few kilometres. And David Miller looks set right now to get himself the stage victory because I think Armstrong is just going to cruise over the last few metres. Well, Ulrich even slowed down and fell behind Tyler Hamilton there. See his skin suit ripped open as well. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. He burned off his back as he skidded across the road. We saw the sparks off the back end of his bicycle. Now one man left out on course. His time, everybody wants to see. We all feel it must be good enough to confirm him now as the winner of the Tour de France tomorrow when we go to Paris. And boy, are there some celebrations for the Tour de France tomorrow on the famous Champs-Élysées. Armstrong rode this last few kilometers ever so wisely. He must have been told by Johan Brunier on the radio, Ulrich has fallen, don't let it happen to you. No, he didn't want to take any risks at all, but he is actually a much better bike handler on situations like this than Jan Ulrich. In the past, we've seen him go downhill very fast on stages of the Tour. But look at him picking his way precariously around these corners. These white bands that you can see here right now are unbelievably lethal on weather conditions like this. Armstrong again accelerating out of the saddle. He knows the time to beat is that of David Miller of Great Britain, 54 minutes and 5 seconds. But that's not important for him. What's important is the time of Jan Ulrich, which is 54 54 minutes and 30 seconds. That's what he's aiming at. He started the day with that advantage of a minute and five seconds, one kilometre to go. Should take him about, about a minute and five seconds right now. At the way he's riding the final kilometre of this race. Through that little bit of flood water there, the USA flag flying off his left shoulder, indicating the tail to crosswind that's blown for much of the day. It was tail for most of it. He swung round a little bit now towards Nardi to become a crosswind. Lance Armstrong, who looked very shaky in the early days of this year's Tour de France, is now sure of making it five in a row tomorrow in Paris. It has been exactly what he hoped it would be, in his own words. He can walk in the hotel tonight, he can look his team straight in the eye, because tomorrow he will go to Paris in yellow. And uh, David Miller, by the way, will be only the 24th a British rider to win a stage of the Tour de France. But this is the man that this Tour now is confirming in the 100th year. And even in this last 500 metres, he is taking absolutely no chances, even freewheeling on the slightest of bends to make sure he doesn't slide. Goodness knows how many riders fell off today, including Jan Ulrich, but Armstrong comes home. It looks like a third-place finish, and he knows it's nothing. He's won the Tour de France with 54-19.66. Rarely do you see Armstrong show that kind of emotion, Phil, at the end of a time trial. He looked up at the clock, he knew the time that Jan Ulrich had come in. But watch this once more, the concentration and the power on this man's face. Look at the smile appearing. He's looking up at the finishing clock, which every rider can see as they come into the finish line. The joy is there, and the moment that he comes up to the line, rarely do you see him just show this kind of emotion. That's for him, and that's for the team. Yes, indeed. Just look at those eyes. He's still concentrating, though, because he wants to make sure those brakes work. Here is his wife, Kirsten, as he now, Lance Armstrong, is ushered into the camper there, ready now for a quick wash and brush-up. Now, this is the yellow jersey, Paul, he really wanted because he knows now He's going to win the Tour. Well, I tell you what, he has answered all of the questions, and uh, despite the number of Tour de France's that we've both been to, 31 for you and 25 for me, the week, there was no way we could predict what was going to happen this afternoon. It could have gone any well, way. We've we, we always said that either Ulrich or Armstrong would win the Tour, and again, it was not the case. It was the British rider, David Miller. This Tour has been totally unpredictable. It really has, and today was uh, a fine performance by these two men. It's a shame that Jan Ulrich fell, but in fact, if he hadn't fallen, I think the two men would have finished with exactly the same time. Armstrong just ahead of Ulrich by about 11 seconds. Well, that is amazing. I'm just checking down to see what it is, and uh, that's going to mean that some... Uh, what is that? Uh, Armstrong's time, 14 seconds. Yes, 11 seconds of difference, so it's now going out to 1.16. Yep, and that's going to feel very comfortable now on the ride into Paris. Ulrich will, uh, will give up after this time trial, acknowledge that Armstrong is now the winner of the Tour de France. So, with one day to go, at last, we have found the man who will go to Paris in yellow. His name is the American Lance Armstrong. It will be for the fifth year in succession. We'll take a break on OLN. Come back.
And welcome back. A massive crowd here in Nantes have witnessed an extraordinary time trial. David Miller of Britain has won the stage. Tyler Hamilton has finished second. Lance Armstrong third. And Jan Ulrich finishes in fourth place. He conceded 11 seconds in the end. He did fall off. And so now the lead for Lance has gone out by 11 seconds to a minute and 16. Which means now that Lance Armstrong will sleep very soundly tonight because tomorrow Jan Ulrich will have conceded defeat on the very last day of the Tour de France. What an incredible day this has been. Sad in many ways that after all of this wonderful uh, racing that we have seen, we are now seeing rain more a little bit this time trial stage. Jan Ulrich uh, lucky not to be injured in his fall. But this rider here, David Miller, it's the third time he's won the stage in the Tour de France. He's got two, row, two time trials and one road race to his credit now. And uh, as far as Britain is concerned, it's their 24th ever stage win in any Tour de France. He did an incredible ride, actually, because he too fell and uh, still came up with a great ride. Well, Paul, happy days tonight as Armstrong now leads the race by a minute and 16. Alexander Vinokurov is still a comfortable lead over Tyler Hamilton. There'll be no more racing for the, for the head places in the race tomorrow, and we can say that for only the first time in the Tour. Well, that's uh, the, the only classification which is cleared up because we still have to wait for the battle for the green jersey, which probably won't get decided until the final sprint on the Champs-Élysées. But uh, very rarely, Phil, do you see Armstrong show so much emotion the two men, it was always going to be a battle between them, and uh, what a great battle it was. It was set up to be the great battle of this year's Tour de France. Really quite remarkable. They were both riding at exactly the same speed for almost every kilometre of the route, and uh, as the time checks came by, it really is remarkable that after 15 kilometres they tied, and after 32 kilometres they were only separated by two seconds. But look at the way they went round this corner. Armstrong was taking it very precariously, and in fact, Armstrong was just steadying himself there as Ulrich went down very heavily indeed. And uh, thank looked, goodness those bales were there. It even looked as though Lance himself was snaking his way through, but I think uh, he had the advantage of knowing that corner was like glass uh, because uh, he'll have been told that three minutes up the road, Jan Ulrich had skidded and crashed. He took it very, very sensibly. Uh, he had the time in hand, and it's always the case that Ulrich had to push himself that little bit harder because he had to take time today, and he knew it. Well, it didn't work out, but... Uh, and so, I'm sorry, I'm just looking here at uh, Jan Ulrich, and uh, look at the face of Lance there. He knew when he could see the clock. He knew he had all the time he needed now. It's a wonderful feeling, but he had to work hard for it. He had to work very hard for it indeed, and in fact, it was only... I think he actually kicked back over the last 10 kilometres or so. He, he knew the time of Jan Ulrich. He knew the problem that Jan Ulrich had had out on the course, and he knew he didn't want to end up on the ground himself. And uh, his face was a picture of joy as he crossed the finishing line there. Well, there's David Miller there, and David will be talking in French, but uh, Lance Armstrong said last night the time could be a tour record. If it hadn't been raining, today he would have been absolutely right he certainly would have been uh, they would have gone faster than Greg Lamont's time of f f average speed of 54.5 yeah. kilometers an hour the weather conditions today were unbelievable they really made uh, almost uh, a, a havoc for the riders to go out there and uh, it was going to be a dramatic day and it certainly proved to be this tour has been a dramatic tour every day well overnight we'll find out just how many riders fell off of course and one we know has broken a rib Uwe Peschel who was the early trend said he's a very good time trial rider champion of Germany and let's hope they can tighten him up and push him off tomorrow and get into the Champs-Élysées there's so many celebrations tomorrow on the Champs-Élysées before the riders arrive and when they do I'll tell you what it'll be fantastic now I'm just hearing that Frank Andreu isn't with Lance Armstrong but he's with his biggest admirer Robin Williams Robin you missed the the big mountain stages but you came in for the big party I always like to you know sometimes you come for the foreplay sometimes you come for the end I don't know but it's today was amazing I was riding in the red car which is basically looking at his behind but it's a lovely behind <laughs> when Schwarzenegger got here he had like five bodyguards an entourage of like 40 people you're just strolling the streets ah, like a ninja if you speak French it's easier they just look at you go oh, you're the uh, the 
woman. <rire> vous êtes Madame Doudfer. Oui, alors C'est vous, hein C'est un peu fou, hein C'est la quatrième fois pour moi maintenant à la tour. C est, c est, félicitations à OLN pour tout la tour. Thank you. We'd like to say thanks for covering the whole thing every morning. It's early in the morning, but hey, with a little caffeine, looks good. Thank you very much. It's been wonderful watching it, and today was magnificent. Did you get to watch some of the tour before you came over? Oh, yeah. I watched the day he fell and got back up and won. <laughs> I also watched Jan be amazing. It was a great day for him. It was, it was a great tour. It's been amazing. It has everything. It's, it's like NASCAR without explosions. You know? It's got it all, downhill, uphill, and incredible moments of humanity, like when Ulrich waited for him, and great moments of, you know, this, and it's, it's great sport. And it's great for Lance right now. Right on, baby. There you go. Right on, baby. Thank you, Robin. You got it. Well, he's an amazing man, isn't he? But I can see that Lance has joined uh, David Miller there, and he also gave him a big hug as well. But they are continuing to answer in French at the moment, but we'll get down to them in English very shortly, I think. Lance, I know, will be very, very relieved about this. David is also very happy. They're very good friends, by the way, Miller and Armstrong. They often talk to each other when they're in different countries around the world. And I remember, was it Christmas time when David rang Miller, when David rang Armstrong up for? Oh, let's have a look at the results first. We'll go back to that. The Pacific Life uh, stage results, how they stand. David Miller gets his third ever stage win of a Tour de France. What a day to choose. Tyler Hamilton in second place. Lance Armstrong in third. Jan Ulrich in fourth. What would it have been if he hadn't have fallen? We'll never know. And the champion of Hungary in the time trial, Laszlo Bedrogi, he held on there to fifth. 26 seconds only slower than David Miller. And Eki Marvi had that nasty bee sting yesterday. He recovered overnight and still produced a great time trial for the for the Olympic uh, time trial champion, Vyslav Ekimov. Penny is seventh and George Hincapi in eighth. Sylvain Chavel ninth and Bruce Agin tenth. They're the top ones. Let's go and join Frankie Andreo. I think he's now with David Miller. I'm here with David Miller, the winner of the stage. David, you've been sick for the last five days. Did you think you had it in you today to win? I was indifferent, you know, I was just like, I was so happy yesterday that I actually felt normal on the bike. And I was really relaxed and I was just like, no problem, I did two, I did a two minute warm up. I got on my bike, I was like, I feel good, no problem, got back up, got in the bus. And uh, I was just so, I've just been, you know, I'm just so happy that I'm healthy again. So did you start off thinking you were going to try to, I mean, did you start off going hard or after maybe halfway you started going? I started off, well, I hadn't warmed up. So I'd say the first, like, five, ten k's. I was just like, ooh, this hurts. And then uh, and I started winding it up, and then I realized I was gone, and I was like, but in the final, I was taking no risk, no risk, no risk, no risk. Still fell off, and I was like, oh. Well, how good did it feel to get a stage win? Bro. Happy. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, he's an amazing enigma, is David Miller, but he won the day. As, as we will take a short break, I remind you, we're going to have the prize presentation yet, and we'll see a very happy Lance Armstrong. Let's take the break then and come back for the presentation. And welcome back to Nantes. So the racing is over. The prize presentation, though, is about to begin, and David Miller of Britain has won. He won in Futuroscope, the big time trial in the year 2000. That was when Lance Armstrong said, who is the British guy? But now they are very good friends indeed. And this is a special win for Miller because he's limped through the tour with bronchitis. He dropped his chain in the prologue. He lost it then by 0.08 of a second. And he would have won it probably by five. So he's come back well in the end, Paul, but you never know what David's going to do anyway. You never know. He's a very talented bike rider, this man. He certainly knows how to ride time trials very fast, and he could have been a double stage winner at the Tour de France this year if he hadn't had that problem on day one in the opening prologue. Chatting to Bernard, you know that? And uh, that really was an incredible time trial performance by him. But he had the advantage of being able to take the risks in the last few kilometers because it, for him, it was all or nothing. If he'd fallen and lost the tour, or lost the time trial, that wasn't important. He did, in fact, go down at least once in the last 15 kilometers. And it will be very interesting tomorrow to find out just how many riders were involved in crashes throughout the day. Because I think we'll be looking at 30 or 40 riders who actually went down on the roads of this race from Pornick to on. But for Miller, it was an exceptionally good performance, overshadowed really a little bit by the big battle and the duel between Lance Armstrong and Jan Ulrich. Well, we look at the crowd now, and the cheers are enormous. There he is, Lance Armstrong. Now, this is a victory salute one day early. 
He's usually in this hot seat and he knows he's won the race at this stage. He never knew until he crossed the line today that he would have a wonderful day in Paris tomorrow. 12 days in the Maillot Jaune as race leader. Tomorrow will be lucky 13, we're sure of that. So Armstrong had a wonderful ride today in the end, a sensible ride as well, didn't push it too much. You can hear the crowd, there are many Americans here by the way, more than ever before. And there's his wife. She's come along here for the last couple of days to see Armstrong. Look at those eyes twinkling now as he throws the crowd the flowers. He'll keep the line. They love those lines. So he goes to shake hands with Bernard Eno and the dignitaries. Lance Armstrong now is going to go from that podium round the back and find our Frankie Andreo and he's going to tell us all about his fifth successful Tour de France. We'll take a break, come back for that interview in a moment. And welcome back as Lance Armstrong signs the souvenir jerseys of the 100th year of the Tour. Robbie McEwen on stage now for a green jersey, a competition he won a year ago, but it won't be till this time tomorrow night he will know if he's going to get the winner's jersey. This one is going right down to the line between him, his team, his countryman Baden Cook, and the German Eric Zabel. It'll be the last sprint of the Tour before we know who's won this one. Separated by only two seconds from Baden Cook at the moment, two points I should say, not seconds, but uh, Robbie McEwen looking pretty confident. All right, well, as Robbie steps down, I've got a feeling now around the back of the stand there, we've managed to find Lance Armstrong with our Frankie Andreu. Here with Lance Armstrong, number five. How was today? Oh man, it was uh, it was nutty as people can see. I mean, the weather was epic and uh, the wind was epic. And I was I don't think I've ever been that nervous before a bike race. I was nervous because of uh, not such an advantage on Jan and also the weather. You know, the difference between uh, you know winning and losing with a crash is just so fine. So I I just tried to take it easy. When I heard he crashed, and I just basically just sat up and said, I'm not taking any risks. And Your so, strategy today was it to take a little bit easier because it seemed like you were dead even at the start and then maybe later on it looked like at least your expression on your face yeah. you seemed to be going harder yeah 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 Johan told me after a kilometer and a half I lost six seconds and then I brought it back to three and then two and then even and then went up by six or seven or eight or ten seconds and then and then uh, at that point I just said I'll just go my go my pace and then I heard he crashed and uh, from then on I just just a little tour of Nantes so today win number five in the record books have you been nervous up to this point and how are you going to sleep tonight oh man I, this has been the, it's been a very hard tour for me for a lot of for a lot of reasons uh, some of which people know some of which people don't know it's just been very tough and uh, I'm, I'm glad it's over how's it feel almost, to be with almost over <laughs> yeah almost over exactly how's it feel to now be with the same company you know Ancatil, Merck, Cinderan well Let's get through tomorrow, but it uh, again, it you know, to, to, if I can join a club like that uh, after such a difficult year and a uh, difficult tour, uh, it'll be sweet. It'll be a lot sweeter than uh, you know a six or seven minute victory. So you having some ice cream or beers tonight? Come on! I'm definitely having beer. I don't know about <laughs> ice cream, but you, I mean, you all know how much I like beer. So I'll be. I told the boys last night. I said if I make it through tomorrow, I said we're gonna. We're going to have some beers tomorrow night, so uh, beers are on me. All right, bottoms up. Thanks, Thanks. Lance. Thanks. Right. Uh, thank you, Frankie. Well, if the beers are on him, Paul, we better find out where he stays, huh, haven't we? Looking at the polka dot jersey, again, a leader's jersey for Richard Veron, but he won this title a year ago, uh, a year ago, a week ago in the mountains, and he will have won it for the sixth time when he gets to Paris. So, as we see Richard Veron on the winner's podium here, where Lance Armstrong has just been, we'll be just take a short break, and then we'll be back for more on today's stage of the Tour de France where an American won the race. And welcome back. Well, the crowd aren't going anywhere here in Nantes. They've witnessed an epic stage in the 100th year of the race. We came to Nantes, don't forget, uh, at the end on the en route to Paris in 1903, the first time trial finish here too, and that was a 90-kilometer event. So it has been a tremendous race, this, and now we have seen the man at last show us a sign of relief. Paul, I've heard Lance say that a couple of times over the week about the fact that there are things we know and things we don't know. Any ideas what he might be talking about? I don't think any of us have any ideas, only the people very close to Lance Armstrong. I think after the Tour de France, we might hear 
that he had has some serious injury that he's been carrying through the tour. Let's not forget that whenever you see him climbing in the mountains this year, he's always been climbing out of the saddle. And I wouldn't be mm. surprised if we hear something once the Tour de France is over about a back injury, maybe going back either to the crash in Mo on day one or back to the Dauphiné Libéré crash as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's have a look at the highlights of Lance's great day. First of all, the start, the pressure. He said he's never been so nervous for a bike race when he left that start house. Quickly settled in, only to be told by Johan Brunel he was six seconds slower than Jan Ulrich. And the rain continued to fall all of the way. He leveled the score, and then Jan started to pull away again, of course, by those five or six seconds. But then the back wheel there was slipping and sliding. And as we know now, of course, Jan Ulrich was falling foul of those slippery roads. It has been a real time trial in the true tradition of the Tour de France, enacted as fast as these boys could go. He didn't win the day, but he certainly won the Tour de France now as he signs off on the Henri des Grands specially initialed jerseys. The overall classification, one day to go, 80 hours in the saddle. Jan Ulrich is now a minute and 16 seconds behind. Alexander Vinokurov at 4.29. Hamilton is up now to fourth, and the two Spanish riders both move down one place. Zubeldia and Ivan Mayo go down to fifth and sixth. Basso holds seventh. Moreau stays best Frenchman in eighth. Carlos Sastre improved to nine, and Francisco Mancebo, he will finish the race in tenth place. Well, that's the overall classification of one of the most extraordinary and exciting tours we have ever seen in the history of days, and I don't think we'll, I don't think we'll ever see a, a better Tour de France than that. Anyway, we will take uh, a quick break, and when we come back, we will be talking again about the Tour de France, and in particular about one American, Lance Armstrong. He sprinted home today to his fifth Tour de France victory. An absolutely amazing day here in Nantes. It was set up to be one of the best time trials, one of the closest ones between Lance Armstrong and his rival. The rain came down. We didn't know how much of a factor that was going to play in the end. It did have a factor there, but boy, Lance Armstrong. Well, when Jan Ulrich took a minute 36 seconds out of Lance Armstrong in the first long time trial, it was absolutely not guaranteed by any stretch of the imagination that he would be able to conserve one minute and five seconds was the gap at the start of the day. And uh, so there was no guarantee that Lance Armstrong had this in the bag. It was a tooth and nail all the way. Jan Ulrich started out very quickly. Lance got a message from the team director, Johan Bernil, that after one and a half kilometers, he had already lost six seconds. Ulrich looking very nervous, I thought, at the start of the race, asking for his glasses to do the time trial with. They seemed to fog up a little bit right in the start ramp. He had no trouble out getting out on the road, though, right underway. Big gear immediately. Very, very powerful bike racer. He was putting everything into the pedals, taking a lot of risks. This is what happened when he got to the slicker corners in the last 15 kilometers of the race. Went down very hard. He was up quickly. At that point, he was... Uh, ahead of this man who wound up winning the time trial, David Miller from England, coming back from a very disappointing tour for a great stage win for him. He almost won the prologue, but he did not. Lance Armstrong, very happy. I think that's a, even a sign of relief almost. Five tour wins in a row. I was very, very scared that Lance Armstrong, something might happen to him out on the course. He's been riding so crazy throughout this race. <laughs> and when Ulrich went down, it was uh, just a real blow for competitively the race itself but uh, Lance a very good bike handler also he comes out here and he looks at the course time and time again and that made the difference today they were both very equally matched on the bike but Lance's preparation once again showing the way and he gets his fifth tour win yeah and Jan Ulrich saying that he didn't want to go out there and drive the course this morning instead he watched a video of the course who knows and who knows what could have happened uh, if he had not gone down but we had had early reports early on saying that uh, all sorts of riders were going down even a uh, even David Miller said he went down there too uh. An amazing, an amazing day. You know, I felt like I was saying, I was a broken record saying, ah, you know, expect the unexpected, but, well, that's how it goes. Well, don't forget, tomorrow is the final day of the 100th anniversary of the 2003 Tour de France. We are on at a special time, special coverage at 8.30, beginning with our pre-race show. Then exclusive coverage of the final stage as the riders make their way down the Champs-Élysées and the crowning of Lance Armstrong, his fifth consecutive Tour de France.
You can always check out uh, updates and information. Join us online at our website, OLNTV.com. Well, for our entire crew here, there is not much more to say about the 2003 Tour de France. It has been exciting, amazing, incredible here in France. We are going to see you tomorrow and put this one to bed. Good night, everybody.